and it says that we attach the above.
Google definition or To fright mark and fight the Superman. Good afternoon, Will. How are you? It's Doris. Hi, Doris. I'm fine. I can't figure out how to get my video, but... I hear you. So, um, right, your camera's off. I wonder, so where is my camera setting? It should be on your, um, to the bottom bar. There's the mute, stop video, security participants. It's a little... It says stop video. So then click on that and it should, oh, it should, uh, there you, okay. But that's, but that's not my video. No, that's not. Yeah, I, uh, let me see something here. <clears throat> this has happened before, it's very frustrating. Oops. Okay, I'm going to hang up everything and try again. I'm going to shut down my computer. Okay.
Hi, Fred. Doris, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? All right. Hi, Will. Hi there. Okay, you're all set, Doris, Will. It's too nice out to be inside. But it here we is. Are. I agree with you. <laughs> Fred, did I tell you that um, I took a hike with my family on Long Pond and we sat on a bench and there was a plaque on the bench and it was dedicated to you. That would be uh, near the, uh, on the railroad spur, right near yeah. the uh, yeah. the power lines cross, right? Yeah. Uh, so the, the friends of the Long Pond Greenbelt gave that to me. I bet it was 10 years ago now because I'd done a lot of work for the Greenbelt. And they asked me where to put it. And I said, that's a place I cross. I, 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 I'm on that that trail a lot. So uh -huh. uh, I figured that was, a, that was a good place to put it because, um, you know, it's something I, that's a trail I actually use. Um, I'm going to send a, the image of my two kids with your plaque in between. It was, <laughs> first of all, it was really great because it was a perfect place to sit down. And it was, it, it just hit all the, you know, all the points. It was wonderful to see your name there. Yeah, well, thank you. So <laughs> thank I, you. Thank you. It was beautiful. That, you know, that, that Greenbelt's always been special to me when I was, I don't know, six or seven years old. My, uh, my father brought me up to that to the green belt to long pond and that was kind of my first nature experience you know with all the colorful dragonflies and all of that it was uh you know it was an eye-opener for me i was really young at the time good it was a good experience hi john hey john how are you okay all right hi marianne hi doris do you see this? I'm, I'm sharing uh, my screen. Do you see that? Villagers Ag Harbor Harbor Committee will commence shortly. I do see that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> want to make That's sure. nice. Hi, Chick. How are you? Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Good Hi. afternoon. Hi there. Um, so uh, Lily said she might be five minutes late. Um, I didn't, know, I didn't hear anything from Herb. Herb usually lets me know if there's going to be any issue with his attendance. Right, I didn't hear uh, from him. And what about uh, Kate Plum? Um, she, she was here early this week to pick up her packet, but I didn't hear if she was... Okay, you don't know oh, anything. I... All right, right, so we'll give it all a moment or two. It's now 4.59. I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> <laughs> We're efficient. Trying to be efficient, yes. Oh, I, see. I see Kate Plum. Great. Hi, Doris. Hi, Brian, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you. So Brian, I hear that you've got like a new career goal in mind. I have some new career goals. Yes, yes, I do. And when is all that going to take place? It's happening as we speak. Okay. So are we so, no longer going to see you have the benefit of your presence at these meetings? I, they will be less and less. <laughs> I mean, I have some things pending, so hopefully we can wrap those up sooner than later. Uh, but then they will be uh, not as frequent as it's been. Well, Brian, share. What's going on? So uh, <laughs> I'm leaving. You're the my... last to know, Fred. No, no, no it's just happening. So uh, I'm leaving my practice at the Adam Miller Group. Um, uh -huh. And I'm going to do, um, I guess it's more like con construction management and building and developing from like ground up in New York and Florida for Farrell Building. Oh, ah, okay. So projects from start to finish on that. Um, I'll have a small practice still with, with some of my existing clients or finish things up, but a lot of it will be geared toward uh, multifamily or commercial between, um, you know, office space, medical space here, Florida, Hudson Valley. Oh. So looking forward to it. Yeah. Seeing it from paper to finish. So it was an interesting offer. Well, congratulations and Thank good you. luck. Thank you. I'll still be living in the village, so I'll see everybody. So okay. Congratulations, Brian. Thank you. 
And where in Florida? Um, from pretty much from Stewart down to like Highland Beach, so East Coast, um, Palm Beach area, about an hour north and an hour south of that, and an hour inland, like Wellington, is some some activities. <laughs> Great. I hope you have a lot of assignments in the winter. Uh, that's my plan, Marianne. Just <laughs> gonna stack them all up for the cold weather. Yeah. All right. So, uh, no, no, Lily. Um, we do have a quorum, so I guess we could get started. Um, let's do the salute. Do we have the flag? Let's do the salute, the salute in slow mo and see whether or not. Um, actually, um, Will, can you text Herb and see whether or not he's on his way? Sometimes Herb has had problems logging in. Let's see yeah. whether or not he's um, in that situation. I know Lily said she would be um, a few minutes late, so. Okay. So um, go ahead and put the flag back up while we'll, we'll let him uh, multitask here. He can say the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm sure, in text at the same time. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. To, the to the Republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God. God. One nation. Under God, indivisible, for all. liberty, and justice for all. I don't know. We all did this better when we were in second grade. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty lame. I don't know if that was technology or what, but we were all on our on, you know, yeah. different stanzas. There, there was some sort of a um, So this is May 6th. Delay, yeah. It's May 6th. Um, it's uh, a meeting of the Harbor Committee. And in attendance, we have um, John Parker, Will Sharp, Kate Plum, um, and hoping for Herb Samble and Lily Fell to be joining us shortly. Um, okay, so. Um, there's a 10 minute period here for um, any public comments. Is there anybody from the public that would like to make a comment on any topic? See any hands there, Doris? I guess not. Um, so can we move on to the minutes? Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Doris, for working to get those minutes to us. Um, I have a couple of comments. Um, I don't have the benefit of a printer, so I, I read them and I reviewed them. Um, at the very bottom, when we were having like some free form general discussion, there is the first point, I think, but anyway, it's about, um, Marianne Eddy doing something or another with Gobler. Um, it didn't quite make sense to me. Can we review that sentence? It was like a one-liner. Where, where are you? Does somebody have the minutes? Um, on the minutes from April 1st, I believe. And uh, it's at okay. the very bottom, general discussion. Other items of discussion? Are you on, on, on eight? Number eight, at the end, toward the end? Exactly. And I think the first point was something about Chairwoman Eddie said something. I don't have it in front. I mean, if I were really good, I could do both of them at the same time, but I don't really want to lose the Zoom call. So um, perhaps you could read that single sentence, John. I told you to read it. Uh, this is 8 2. Uh, Chairwoman Marianne Eddie discussed with Dr. Gobler alternative to IA systems in the village of Sag Harbor. Now that doesn't make grammatical sense. Um, uh, I think probably maybe it was- Well, it also doesn't- um, you, uh, well, you, I'm not talking about the grammar, John. I'm just talking about, I have no memory of um, any conversation with Dr. Gobler about um, uh, any 
alternatives to IA systems. Does anybody else remember the conversation? Yeah. Uh, oh, we did Dina have a has now joined us. Marianne. Hi, guys. Yeah, um, what did we discuss? Well, we had a discussion that Frank Russo um, was working with uh, Dr. Gobler on a um, somewhat advanced version of the IA system that they, he had, Gobler had presented in his lecture. And we were interested in that. Um, this so is there a wood, was a wood chip system. Yeah. Right. And, right. And, you know, um, at the end of the meeting today, I can talk to you about my conversation with Frank about that. But uh, we did, that's how that started. Okay. And we were talking that he has to go okay. through the. So process. I would like to change that. So may, may possibly may, make it um, uh, discuss. I'm going to change that sentence. Discuss Dr. Gobler's new alternative. You know, I don't. Does that make sense? I think it'd be better to say the center, say the system being developed by the Center for Clean Water Technology. That's good. It's not his system. He's the director of it, but I think it'd be better to reference the Center for Clean Water Technology. That's good. Okay. And then there was another thing there about the horseshoe crabs. Did I promise that I was gonna go and look and see whether or not horseshoe crabs were in endangered by the proposed dredging? I don't remember if I did. I'm not, that sentence is kind of. Yes, I think you were gonna look into, uh, you were looking into the existence of the horseshoe crabs in Northwest Creek. Well, um, because, I I had um, I'd attended this webinar on horseshoe crabs, and there went through my mind that there might be habitat there in Little Northwest Creek that we should be concerned about. And I think, Will, I talked to you, and you said that you were um, conversant with, um, you know, you had a relationship of some kind with Mike Botini. Were you going to follow up with Mike and ask him whether or not Yes. He thought there were horseshoe crabs in Little Northwest Creek that we should be yeah. concerned about. And to, tomorrow I'm actually going on the okay. creek with a, a gal from Surfrider to start the water investigation. So we'll have that conversation as well. I don't know. But she, I don't think, is a naturalist. Right. right. Um, from observation, I don't see any nesting in the creek. I see it on the beach, but not in the creek. But I might, um, I'll talk to Bottini. I already called him about it. Right. You did, hey, what, uh, okay. What, yeah. So can we just change that? Um, and I, I, I have the floor. For some reason I'm talking and everybody else can jump in on top of me, so. Um, uh, can we just change that sentence to say that I express concern about um, the possible presence of horseshoe crabs in Little Northwest Creek vis-a-vis -vis the proposed dredging, and that um, I suggested that we follow up with someone knowledgeable such as Mike Botini, period. Does that suit you all? Good. Yes. And then I'm going to pass that on to, to Will because Will actually knows him. I say hi and bye to him, but I don't, you know, I don't know that he'd answer my emails. So, in fact, I think I did email him on that and I didn't get a response. Okay. Anybody else have a comment on the, um, John, can you read us what you might have um, changed that sentence to read? No, I haven't changed that. The, which sentence are you talking about now? The one that references horseshoe crabs. Okay, uh, Number three, I think, in the discussion items. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it now. Well, you discussed an upcoming webinar on... on, on um, we can... Okay, I, right. I have to rewrite it. Wasn't, it. it wasn't... Right, okay, so... 
Um, does anybody else have any comments? I think we should table this just because I have comments on two of the things that quote me. So um, are there any other comments about these minutes? Well, that's fine. I, I don't. I, I no. said, said, can I get a motion? Could, can I just ask a question? Dor Doris, I, I sent you some, some notes yesterday and I didn't see a, a new version of the minutes with those, with those notes. Is, is that correct or did I miss that? Doris there? Sorry, I had my microphone off. Doris, I see your picture. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes, they, they were, um, I did edit the uh, minutes, John, and, and I did circulate them. Okay, somehow I missed that. Somehow I missed it, but that's fine. With the with your um, the changes. Okay, but Marianne wants to table it anyway, so that's that's fine. Yeah, I'd like to table it, and then we don't have to do this in a public forum. Um, and John, you and I can work on on revising those two sentences. It's really small, but let's just make it right. So, okay, do you want to have a motion to um, table these minutes, please? I'd I'll like make to a table motion them until the June. Is it June fourth? Thank you, Lily. Second, please. I second. Is my motion? Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um. So this has been kind of rocky. Are we having an audio problem? You are. Your video is pretty uh, rocky. At least that's the way I'm. Yes, Marianne. Okay, so um, <laughs> somebody agrees. Um, all right, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna tune out. I'm gonna turn off, and then I'm gonna come back in. So um, bear with me. Well. Well. Yeah. While Marianne is doing that, let me if you're going to talk to Mike Bottini tomorrow, mm -hmm. mention to him that we believe there's at least one river otter living in the ditch at Havens Beach. Oh yeah, I know he I, I he's very interested in river otters and wants to know of all sightings. Where where? About a third the way down the the ditch. Last time I saw it. You mean landward of the of the of the the bridge? Yes. In that in that funky green water, yes, great. That's Let exciting. Now it, it, it's you know it's possible it could be a muskrat. I think it looks more like a, a river otter. It's very spooky, so you don't get to stand there and you know and watch it. You get a you get a glimpse and it's gone. Great. Okay. The way it moves and the head looks more like a, an otter to me than a than a muskrat. What time of the day did you see that, John? Afternoon. I tried to get pictures, but every time I would, you know, move to raise, just moving the camera would spook it and it would go under. But it was the same, I went back two or three times and it was at this, roughly the same place, so. Won't tell too many people. Certainly one source of that small animal uh, 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 fecal bacteria, however. <laughs> okay, I hope that's better. Yes. Yeah, before your mouth okay. was moving, but nothing was coming out. And that's when somebody would jump in and then the sound would catch up and, and uh, so. Okay. All right, good. It sounds much better on this end as well. Okay, so um, can we move on to decisions? Um, the first one is 12 Green Street. Um, Chick, you wrote up a decision. Can you um, give us highlights, please? Is Chick Voorhees here? He's muted.
Yeah. Check your muted. Check, I'm asking you to unmute. Check. Um, Herb just said that the, he can't get in, that you're not letting him get in. Doris. Okay, let me check the waiting yeah, room. Do you have a problem with Herb? He's a nice guy. Yeah, I vote to let Herb in. Yeah. Let me check, hold on. Yeah. He's probably hanging out at the American Hotel. You could just go over there. I don't see him. I don't see. Um, uh, I'm gonna check. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. He says he's just assuming it's delayed. I don't see um, Herb. I don't have anyone waiting. I'm just gonna go look for my glasses, my other glasses. Okay. okay. Um, Doris? Um, yes. I'm thinking that he's probably got the wrong information because I think he's in some room where nobody else is. Is it possible you could just quickly email him the right contact? I will do that. Okay. It's a rocky meeting so far. Oh, I see. I see someone now. Zoom user. Mm. So I've been trying since five. Use, using Doris's sign and in from from the last email. Can you resend me? I'm going to say, yes, Doris. Someone is just logged in, a Zoom user? Well, let them in, and we'll see who it is. Please. I, I did already. That's me. Oh, Hi. excellent. Hi. Oh. I don't know what happened yeah. there. I was, I've been trying since five, and for some reason, I got that Zoom, you know, meeting host will let you in. But uh, anyway. Happy to see everybody. <laughs> All right. Hi, sir. Um, so we've made our, um, let the record reflect that Herb Sample has joined us. Um, Herb, we've made our way through um, the flag salute and uh, the minutes, and we are now looking at decisions. Chick, um, you've unmuted your microphone. That's great. Um, I'm here. Yes. Um, can you give us um, highlights of the um, decision that you wrote for 12 Green Street? Sure. Uh, so this has been discussed extensively. Uh, it is a um, project that we're all very familiar with through many hearings. Uh, at the last meeting, I was asked to prepare a decision and I sent that um, earlier. I will just pull it up if you give me one moment. I'm not sure everybody had time to look at it. I know and uh, I really had intended to get them out earlier and I apologize. So we'll walk through it for just a minute. Got it ready. Okay, let me just shrink that down a little bit. So this is for 12 Green Street for today's meeting. Goes through a background on what is proposed under the proposed project, um, which we are quite familiar with. It's a house that's being moved farther landward. Uh, there is an existing dwelling on the property. There's a shoreline restoration to remove Phragmites and improve native vegetation on a slope. Uh, there's a removal of turf grass and replacement with a buffer. Uh, the buffer is an average 50 foot buffer um, throughout the area across the wetlands. Uh, there is a fixed dock and float proposed, a swimming pool to the east of the structure, new dry wells, and an innovative on site system. Uh, the property is described under background just in terms of zoning, location, tax map, size, and floodplain. And then I went into a little more detail here just about the extensive discussion and deliberation, changes to the plan, documentation submitted by the applicant, uh, 
comments from the public, uh, village consultant input, and um, really the extensive uh, review that this had. Uh, again, it's pretty fresh in our minds. Uh, one of the big things was to demonstrate uh, conformance with the particular standard regarding practical alternatives. And based on the vote at the last meeting, the applicant met their burden. Under that, we did talk extensively about sanitary design, ARB input, historic nature of the structure, uh, you know, how, how it could be improved and uh, that we really went through that exercise extensively. Uh, so that's reflected under finding A, um, the house is eight feet farther landward under B, average 50 foot buffer, as I mentioned under C, there is a bluff on the property uh, and that is landward of the wetlands. Uh, I have visited the site. It is a man-made bluff, it is stable. And um, again, it, uh, there's an existing dwelling. So it seems as though just in maximizing setbacks from the wetlands that the setback from the bluff is also maximized. The um, IA system is very important. There's an existing sanitary system that is substandard uh, that's much closer to the wetlands, approximately 60 feet. The new tankage, uh, closed tankage is about 86.7 feet from the wetlands and the actual leaching system is close to 100. It's at 96.7 feet. Uh, so that is a significant improvement. Uh, the applicant provided information on uh, reduction of nitrogen load and it's approximately 26 pounds. Um, I think those should actually be per year. My apologies for that. I will change that in the final version that goes back to Doris. Uh, but there is a reduction in nitrogen load on an annual basis. The fixed pier is a through flow decking and the float has enough water so it will not come in contact with bottom sediments. Um, again, the um, project will have less of an impact and alternatives have been addressed. And the applicant provide that weighing scale. You may remember, I just pulled some of the highlights from that because there were some salient points regarding the benefits uh, to the environment as part of that presentation. Uh, this portion of the project is a type two action. Uh, it's a residential zone and um, it's an existing residential home. So there's no conflict with uh, waterfront consistency. These are the generally standard conditions. We do like to reflect that the IA system will be installed, that the buffer will be the, uh, installed. We didn't receive any supplemental information on diamondback terrapin from the applicant. So we included a condition to look to protect the species during construction uh, based on the matrix that we all worked on. There is potential bad habitat in the area. So if trees are being cleared, there is a window. Uh, however, if the applicant can get an article 12, I'm sorry, article 11 no-take permit, the village would recognize that um, and allow clearing in accordance with the DEC's parameters. Uh, and the rest are, are even more standardized. We do have the um, qualified professional uh, for the three year period of survivability of the vegetation. And we are looking for a covenant and the applicant did note that over 41% of the site would be covenant covenanted as buffer under this project. So we reflected all of the latest plans and um, this is ready for any discussion or your decision. Uh, it's here for your consideration. Um, you brought up the terrapin issue. Um, how is the applicant going to be aware of those periods of time when they can plant and generally muck around in the, um, the shoreline vis-a-vis -vis terrapins? How, how That's are we right going here. to um, notify them? How are we going to notify our is it It's right here in condition five. They would need to observe the condition of the permit. Right, but where, uh, let's see, what does it say? Um, it's located on Upper Sag Harbor Cove. Diamondback Terrapin could be present in the area during spring and summer. 
Piling installation above mean high water during spring and summer is prohibited without village approval and Phragmites approval, I'm sorry, removal and buffer planting at the site between June 15th and September 15th is prohibited in order to protect nesting terrapins. Uh, monitoring is required prior to planting activities. Okay. And if any such are encountered, the village should be notified. Okay, thank you. I did not read that. Um, the other question I have is that um, I had asked you and you had taken a closer look at the planting plan and found that some of the species that were listed were perhaps not um, salt tolerant. And I believe you had a conversation with Mr. Hollander. Is that reflected in the uh, planting plan that's going to be approved along with this um, application? Uh, yes. The substitution, did he make a substitution? Yep. You can see here that uh, these are the five different plans that are under approval. Most of the plans were dated March 22nd, 2021. The planting plan, as you can see in bullet three, is dated April 16th, 2021. That had the one substitution that we worked out with Ed's office uh, for a, a, a little bit better plant selection. And we also added uh, notes regarding Phragmites management and how that would be conducted. Those were two things that we felt were uh, worth um, just beefing up the, the planting plan a little bit and improving it. So that is reflected in this permit. Okay. That's great because that was my third question. Um, you know, um, there's an, another um, application that's going to be approved tonight, and they, um, in front of the committee, outlined a very rigorous um, Phragmites removal, uh, three year, four year, whatever it is. And I'm just wondering whether or not we have the same rigorous, because some of it's on village property, right? Um, that is correct. That there's the same rigorous effort to uh, truly remediate that site from Phragmites. And that's outlined here, something similar? Yes, there are detailed notes on the plan. And uh, I'll just tell you that I went back and forth about three times with Justin Willard in Ed Hollander's office, um, asking for a little bit more detail and uh, you know, a, a better uh, explanation of the method for Phragmites removal. So we believe that is reflected here. So if in two years we have like Phragmites removed, but we kind of have a mess and Phragmites are coming back, is there a basis there for um, the village to go back and, and ask for um, renewed effort in terms of what's laid out here in this decision? Yeah, they have qualified landscape architects. They have um, environmental uh, experts, uh, one of which is on the call tonight and may have another application with us. And I expect that they will be monitoring using their um, expertise and um, ensuring that the planting plan is adequate. Uh, it is clear under the permit plans what is in expected. And there is a performance guarantee for that three year period uh, to review and report and basically ensure that we get what is on the plans. So three years. Okay, um, but the plans would not, I'm sorry, Will, that um, that three-year plan does not include the part of the village property where the Phragmites are being removed, right? Just as a benefit to the village. Is that correct? That's part Is there any um, guarantee that there's going to be, uh, is it part of the plan? That yes. the, um, the piece that belongs to Sac Harbor Village? Okay. All right. Will, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I think that was it. it. So after three years, conceptually, the Phragmites could grow back anywhere. Uh, yeah, the idea is to control it within that period of time through the aggressive uh, cutting and, mm -hmm. uh, and makes sense that was proposed and to um, monitor it and to get native vegetation established. And both- uh, Okay, may I have a motion? Go ahead, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say that both Ed no, I was. and D. Lang have experience in those uh, restorations. Okay. 
Um, any other questions for Chick on this permit? So just- um, I have a motion to um, go ahead. No, I'm just going to say it's specifically Kate? laid out about the 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 Farragmati's removal on the village property. It, it's but it's it's it, it's not separated from the Harris property. Is that correct? It's my understanding is that it's part of the plan. Well, we would like to know that for sure. Can you take a look? Your understanding, meaning like you've looked at it and you see that the village property is included in those plans for um, rigorous Phragmites removal. Yeah, I think it should be at least separated a little bit. So there's a no notation that it's, that's on village property because I didn't, I think that would be important for the future that, um, you know, he's, he's willing to do this on the village property, which is a big thing. And um, While I'm looking, I don't know if you want to entertain <laughs> input from the applicant if a uh, representative is here. Otherwise, I will check the files and report back. So I, I can just weigh in if that's okay. That, that was part of the plans. It was noted on the, on the Ed Hollander plans that the same treatment of the applicant's property is going to be the treatment that is on the village property to the south. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and Chick, you can go ahead and, you know, um, we'll just take that on Brian's word. Um, Chick, I would ask you to go and verify the fact that what you have in front of you um, measures up to those expectations, but we should move forward here. Um, may I have a motion to approve this? I'll so move. I'll second. Thank you. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. All opposed? No way. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get to say my nay. <laughs> All opposed? Nay. All right. Um, next item on the agenda um, is 37 Glover Street. Um, you have a decision here to review with us, um, Chair? Yes. Um, and this application needed no variances whatsoever. Mm -hmm. you met all the setbacks, correct? This met the setbacks, the buffer, um, all, re all relevant setbacks. And um, didn't, you know, didn't require anywhere near the level of review because it uh, achieved the goals of chapter 285 in the initial application. Uh, so this is the draft permit. I, I don't know that we need to review it in detail. Does anybody feel like we need to review this in detail or are we? Um... Uh, I've reviewed it and I'm fine with it. Same here. From her symbol. Right. Um, it was a very straightforward application. I'm comfortable with it. Um, can if anybody has any questions, can they either ask the questions or may I get a motion to approve this um, application? I'll move to approve. Okay. Second, please. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Um, the next item here is 29 Harding Terrace and um, Doors. I understand that the um, applicant has withdrawn this application. Um, how do we actually handle that threat? I've never had one withdrawn. Yeah, I mean, the applicant has withdrawn the application, so there's nothing for us to consider. So uh, uh, the application is withdrawn. It doesn't require any further action by the board. Okay. Um, moving on then to 68 West Water Street. I'm sorry, um, um, Marianne. 
I'm sorry, Fred, do we need a motion to yes. withdraw the application? No, they, the applicant withdrew the application. We, we have nothing that we have jurisdiction over anymore. So there's no, no action for us to take other than oh. to indicate for the record that the application with, was withdrawn by the applicant. Okay. And, Thank and you. they no longer own that house. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Yep. Um, okay, so now moving on to old business. Um, we have 14 Cove Road. Um, Mary, just very quickly, there was another one, uh, I think on the agenda, 68 West Water Street. Correct. Oh, Correct. I'm sorry, didn't I just, I thought I just said 68 West Water Street. Oh, I did, and then we, okay, then we circled was, back and then I went right. Okay, 68 West Water Street. Um, we have a, a permit here. This is for the Fred Mighty's removal. And we have oh, Marianne, there is, by Billy oh, interrupt. For, there is some late breaking news, <laughs> just that the applicant uh, just before the meeting requested that this be adjourned. You might recall at the last meeting, I had asked a couple of questions and the, the committee did direct me to prepare a permit, but it was subject to um, root barrier uh, was one item, just a couple of minor changes to the plan. The applicant just submitted that plan late this afternoon. And in recognition of that, uh, they asked that we adjourn to next month. So I had prepared a draft permit, which included a okay. condition, but I would rather have a cleaner permit that references the up-to-date plan that we just received. So there was nothing really that we could do and the applicant requested okay. adjournment. Okay. May I have a motion to um, table this application until um, June, what is the date? June 1st, June 6th? June the next meeting is June 3rd. Doris? <coughs> Can I have a motion to table this application? I so move. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. All in favor? Aye. Aye. For the record, the next meeting All is right. June 3rd. Thank you. Okay. Um, so now moving on to old biz. The first item on the agenda is 14 Cove Road. Um, Chick, can you remind us where we were in this, the process of deliberation here? Uh, yes, we had had the hearing. Um, there was some discussion and uh, we had requested a comparison table to assist in understanding uh, the benefits of the application and the changes that were resulting from it. And I believe that um, we should hear from the applicant if there's any new information that they would like to present in response to that request from the prior meeting. Good, good evening, members of the board. Brian DeSessa, attorney for the applicant. Um, we did resubmit the, the question came down to what, um, as this board may recall, the site was approved about a little over a year ago for a new construction. And there were some, we needed to clarify and, and just clear up that the new proposal, which is a different house from the previously approved house here, meets the same and maintain, holds the same setbacks from the bluff and the edge of wetland. So to that end, we resubmitted the Saskia surveys um, of the approval and of the house we're proposing now to show that there is consistency there. Um, I can screen share now if uh, that's permitted. Um, right, hold on. I uh, will. So Chick, I it's coming back to me. I'm sorry. I'm out of town and I didn't get my packet. Okay, but, Brian. Um, I do remember now talking about it that there were some discrepancies in what we thought we'd approved previously with what the new plan is. Is that not right, Chick? Yeah, I think part of it was, it was very difficult to read the plans and um, making comparisons was difficult and the committee wanted to understand the, the changes. Correct. So, um, I, I have a submission from, I believe it was the 19th, Brian, and I guess that's what Brian's gonna present that should help. And uh, overall, it's a fairly minor modification from my recollection, but we did want to kind of understand those uh, changes. That's correct. Um, 
So if you can, can you see the two screens that I have up before the board? Yes, perfectly. I'm trying to make them so you can see both so we can walk through yeah. both of them. So if you see here, um, you this is the on my right side where the mouse is, is the house that is currently approved by the board and the survey on the left is what we're proposing. Um, so the, the approved house uh, has a setback from the bluff crest of 37 feet. And the proposed house has a setback of 37 six. So that's the corner corner nearest there. As we move around the side, um, this is, you know, we're main, this was a set side setback. We maintain the same side setbacks. The buried propane tank remains the same on both applications. Um, moving to the north, the edge of pool on the new proposal is 32.8, as I'm indicating with the mouse. The previous appro approval for the edge of pool was at 32.6. And the previous approval also included a proposed terrace at 26.6 which we've removed, which will be planted grass. So removing some of that hardscape. This was the current approval. This is what we're asking for, which removes that patio area. As we move, bear with me so I can move these. The, uh, this you see here is the existing house and improvements as well as on here. So we're moving landward of that. You'll see, uh, we, we, it wasn't, uh, this, the, the 63 feet to the edge of the proposed decking wasn't indicated on the old survey, but it is in the, the, the same scaled distance. As you move over here, the, there's a 57.2. We have, ours remains 58.4. So we've increased the setback slightly there. Um, we've, we've at the- Well, but that's not the setback. I'm sorry. How is the setback from the bluff changing? There's um, setback from the, um, I guess the mean high water line. So the the reds are the bluff uh, and, and the greens are the, the red mean. line. Yeah. So I'm going with the red. So we're at 41.6 to to that edge. Um, their edge of house was at 33.8. Um, we're showing the edge of house at 34.8, and they were at 55.9. From the edge of wetlands, we're at 57.1 and 58.4 from the pertinent parts of, parts of that. So the approval to where we are is the same or greater. We're asked, we, we have greater setbacks or equal setbacks from what was previously approved on our different house. Uh, everything in the front IA system remains the same, but we had a lot of, this survey was very busy, as you recall, so that was some of the confusion. So we simplified the survey to, to show the bluff and the wetland setbacks. Um, that was where the question came from the last uh, meeting. Okay. So um, I have, um, I'm kind of scratching my head why a year ago we approved this. And I guess, um, Chick, my question to you, was there a previous um, structure on this property and this is the footprint? There is. You could see it here, and it's actually being, to approve something like it's being retreated. I, I'm sorry. It, it, the answer is yes. There, yes, the answer is that is correct. Okay. Um, any other questions? If I could just ask Brian something, uh, and in full disclosure, I live just down the street, so I'm, I'm a little familiar with the site. Uh, when, when I'm on the site, when I look at the site, one of the most challenging things that I see is that the views out to the water are fairly um, uh, constricted because of the trees, uh, some good, maybe some not as healthy, that are occurring throughout the entire uh, buffer area. Can you perhaps address what the long range management plan is for, for those trees and whether you're going to do an inventory of those trees, whether you expect to preserve them or what, what is the basic plan for that? If I can ask. 
Sure. The, uh, with the planting plan that was submitted, the, the trees that are in the buffer area that are healthy, there, there's no plan to remove or do anything with those. Um, any, anything that's dead would be removed. Um, but there is, in, in viewing the site, there's some dead branches. So when we go in there to do the work, um, any of the dead branches would be pruned uh, pursuant to the plan with LaGuardia. But to remove any of those trees uh, is not part of the plan. Those were in the buffer area. You saw on the survey, there's the proposed clearing limits. Um, we're not proposing to go into anything further than what um, has already been cleared. And then after the project's done, uh, that buffer area will be further augmented on, on the landward side. So the trees that you're pulling up now that you see that are uh, closest to the water uh, will not be affected. The trees to the north um, northwest of the house are proposed to be removed. So Yes, the, where the arrow is now, those trees would be removed as part of the construction project. That's on uh, the any, street side. Those are on, on the, the street, street side. side. Anything on the water side, um, there is no plan or no uh, application now to remove anything on the water side. So and is the, the converse also true that you do not plan to remove those trees? Right? That's, what the current, that's what the current plan says. Yes, absolutely. Okay. We would have, and, if, and if we did, we know, and I've told the applicants, they would have to come back here um, and seek permission for that because that's inside of the area that's regulated for clearing. And will you have an arborist or some uh, uh, licensed professional uh, oversee that process, especially in terms of what you describe as pruning back some of the good trees that, it, that are living in the buffer area? I can check. Uh, LaGuardia Design is the landscape architects on this, so I will check with them on that. I don't, I don't have that, um, that method of how they were going to do that. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, further questions? Well, that, that, uh, if I may comment, that's, um, that's a critical path item, I guess, that there, um, there needs to be some professional observation about trimming, because we've had numerous projects where um, something was trimmed prior to approval or after approval, et cetera, and it was more um, than anticipated. So I think at this point, we want to get some, uh, if LaGuardia can sign off on that, that's great. But I, I think if you just leave it to um, LaGuardia's oh, subcontractor, then you don't know what's gonna happen. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, we, we, would be, we would be prepared that if there was a condition in the permit that any, any pruning or anything, a, a, a plan has to be submitted, um, that would be acceptable to us because we're not looking to, to skate any issues or regulation on that. Right. Okay. Is it possible to speak to the committee in private or go to a work session quickly? Um, the only thing we can do is we can do an executive. Or an executive. Um, uh, Doris, Fred, how do we deal with this? Well, I, what would be the basis for the executive session? Um, why are we going into executive session? We're in the, uh, right now we're in the middle of a hearing, so. Well, is this going to be approved? I guess my question is about- We can finish, I, you know, I, I don't know what the question is, so it's hard to know, but I mean, um, we certainly, I mean, this hearing could be closed. It could be adjourned. I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but you know, certainly the board, has, if there's a, something that's eligible for executive session for us to, to discuss, I mean, um, you know, we could, temporary, you, you could uh, temporarily recess the hearing and go into executive session, but I'm, I'm not sure what the basis for going into executive session would be, so. So Fred, on the other hand, could we go forward and it seems like it's heading for approval, but it's not actually, and then after that, we could have an executive, I just hate to, to do an executive session, we have to terminate this Zoom call, start another Zoom oh, call. Oh, I see. Back here, which I don't want to squelch your concern. I'm just wondering whether or not we could have the executive session after the end of this meeting. Even if we vote to approve this, we haven't done it finally until we vote to approve the final drawn up permit. Is that not true? That's true. So, um, 
Because we're, vo we're voting to direct Chick to prepare the resolution of approval, but we still have to vote on the final resolution. Correct. Exactly. So between asking Chick to draw up the permit and actually voting to accept the permit, which would happen next month, at the end of this meeting, we could have an executive session. That's my suggestion, just to keep things moving along and to spare all the people that have signed into this other than Harbor Committee the pain of getting dumped out of this Zoom call and then having to dial back in. I understand. That's fine. Okay. So hey, then, hi. Yeah. Excuse me. Hi. I'm, I'm a homeowner and I, this is my first time attending one of these hearings. And, and I know it's a public hearing. I'm just curious for what so reasons would you want to hold a private Ms. session? Ms. Thomas, yes. can I ask you to introduce yourself and give us your address? Because you're right, oh. this is a public hearing and you and anybody else certainly has um, the right to, to make a comment. I just ask you to introduce yourself. For oh, the record. okay, sorry. I'm Tanya Thomas and my address is 66 Meredith, Sag Harbor. And I, I was just curious, you know, I don't, I, I, this is my, like I said, my first session and I was curious for, you know, in what instances do you uh, stop a meeting, a public hearing and decide to go into executive session? Is it that there's so much to discuss or, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you make decisions in executive sessions. I'm just curious, I'm trying to learn. Sometimes it's because we want the advice of our attorney Fred, can you elaborate on how the executive session is used? Sure. Uh, you know, executive session, you know, for the board to go into executive session, you know, the, the topic has to be something that the statute allows to, us to go into executive session. The, 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 the open meetings law, you know, requires us and, and the purpose of it is to make sure that decisions are made and deliberations are made in public, but there are certain uh, you know, limited exceptions to the open meetings law, you know, and certainly uh, consulting with an attorney on legal, on a legal issue is one, um, you know, if something would affect litigation, if something related to, uh, uh, you know, a personnel matter with the village, those are, you know, that wouldn't be something that would come here, but those are the kinds of things that, uh, you know, are eligible for executive session. So, um, there are, it's very limited as to what items can be discussed in executive session. I see. Okay. Thank you so much for explaining yeah, that. I've been, on, I've been on this committee for five or six years now, and I can think of one situation where we had an executive session. So, um, I think we want to <laughs> move to, I would like to ask for a motion for Chick to draw up a permit for this application. Oh, we should I'm close sorry, the, hearing, close the yes. hearing first. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, or ask for, um, it is a public hearing. It's still open. If there's any yeah. further public input, you want right. to. Are there, is there anybody else in the public who would like to comment on 14 Cove Road? I don't see any raised hands. Okay. So far, no hands. So then um, I'd like to ask for a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. May I get a motion to close the public Thank you, may I get a second? Second. Second. <clears throat> Thank you, all in favor, aye. Aye. Aye, okay. Um, now I'd like to ask for a motion to ask Chick Voorhees to draw up um, a permit for this application. Um, may I get a motion? I move. So move. A second. And that was a second from Will. Is that correct? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Okay. Aye. Okay. Um, so um, the next item we have on old business is eight on an open hearing, correct doors. 
Yes, I just want to state for the record. But um, actually, uh, the next the next meeting for Fourteen Cove to um, for Chick to prepare the draft. Um, it's June third. Okay. Um, and Dora, eighteen Bluff Road. Did I see that the applicant asked us to table this until the June meeting? Correct. Yes. So, um, right. May I have a motion to table 18 Bluff Point Road until the June 3rd meeting? I move. I'll move. Thank you. First from Herb and a second from John Parker. All in favor of tabling 18 Bluff Point Road until the June 3rd meeting, please say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Um, so now moving on to new business, um, we have uh, 14 Vitale Chili, Silly. How do you say it? Silly, I believe. Silly. Oh. Silly. Silly. All right. Hmm. Is there somebody here to speak Good. From, to this Silly. applicant? Good evening, members of the board. Brian DeSessa, attorney for the applicant. Um, I'm sorry, Brian. Um, Marianne, do you want to request a motion to open the public okay. hearing? Okay, thank you. May I have a motion to open the public hearing on 14 Vitale Silly? Move. Thank you, Herb. Second? Second. Thank you, Will. All in favor? Aye. All right. Um, good evening, members. Brian DeSessa, 2462 Main Street, Suite 7, Bridgehampton, New York, attorney for the applicant. Um, this was an application that the board um, has previously seen the applicant then um, property transact, the property was uh, transferred and the new applicant is re uh, requesting a, a reduced, reduce the size of the one story residence. The previous proposal you saw here had a two story residence pool uh, and associated structures. Um, we've since gone back to the zoning board, um, asked for, reduced amounts of relief. Namely, this was a pro originally proposed as a two-story house and had approximately 3,000 feet of pyramid relief. The applicant now is proposing a, a one-story house uh, and the pyramid relief was reduced down to 900 feet. Um, the house is in a flood zone, so there it is uh, elevated, um, but it is a one-story house, much lower. Um, all of the structures meet the 75-foot setback to edge of wetland. Applicant has proposed a 50 foot non-disturbance buffer, a four foot wide path through that buffer area down to a dock. The applicant has obtained uh, DEC permits, uh, health department permits, Southampton Town Trustees, Army Corps of Engineer permits for the dock and other related uh, activities. Um, and we are here um, for the Harbor Committee's approval on an application that meets uh, all the recommendations and criteria set forth in chapter 285. Um, so I have one question, um, Chick. Um, when we um, provide access to a dock through a buffer, do we usually ask for something that's the shortest distance between two points? This is kind of a circuitous uh, pathway to the dock. What are your thoughts? Uh, we have done that <clears throat> in the past, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, I might be able to just bring up the landscape plan, Brian, if... Um, I, I can't, if you could, Chick, I just, I'm limited on my laptop with... Yes, so this is the landscape plan, which um, the property now is... Cleared. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much cleared. There, yeah. There's a couple of trees, but most of it is long. Uh, so it is a good landscape plan that we did review, um, but it is a circuitous route from, through the buffer. Uh, it would obviously involve less square footage if that could be reoriented. Um, you know, it's it's been a kind of a request to see if it's possible, uh, <laughs> if there are certain steps or reasons why it needs to be in this configuration, but I would like to hear from the applicant. Because sure. If, if I if I could weigh in on that, and, and the, the plan was done by uh, Ed Hollander, and, and the purpose of it is to make it, uh, it it's pretty much lawn now. The, the goal is to make it look meadow from both the applicant side and from the water side. And if you notice on the plan, um, 
you have the tradi you have the you know the 50 foot buffer which is fully planted and then you also have here the additional 25 feet which doesn't have to be buffered is included in that native buffer so they, the applicant has made the buffer 75 feet and the purpose of the path going through there is to disappear so when you're when you're sitting on the hat when you're sitting at the house or you're in the water looking up toward it there's not a direct view corridor up either way um, looking at the path or otherwise. So it kind of blends in. So you'll have grasses on either side. So you don't know where the path starts or ends. So it's, it's visually appealing to both um, sides of, the, of whoever's looking at it. Um, and in contemplating that, Mr. Hollander said, because they're adding the extra 25 feet, this path would work better because if you look at everything's screened uh, up and through until the structure. So coming down the side, uh, in his opinion, made the most sense and that's why the path came there. So um, we would hope because of the additional buffer and, and the intent here to make this all meadow uh, and planted out buffer area of 75 feet versus 50, that the board would consider the, the path as proposed versus a, uh, you know, a direct corridor through that area. Well, I like the romance of that. I think that's terrific. I, I, I just wonder if, if you're living in this house and you want to go to the dock, with your sir, show me how you leave the house and how you get on this path. I just wonder whether or not in, it's, it's through the southern I'm, side. I'm yeah, this is the house right here, Marianne. Right. This is the house. What's what's the structure, what's the structure at the top of this? A sod. There's, yeah, it, that, it's that's grass. one area and a drainage system underground. Okay, so the house is down here, and what is it? The, there's like a heavy black line. What is the heavy black line? Those what are that? that's the, the retaining drive. walls. Those are retaining walls. How high is this elevated? Okay, I'm sorry. So it's it's in an AE. The flood zone is AE six. So with two feet of New York freeboard, you have to be uh, a minimum of eight feet. Um, so the, the walls are four, four and a half feet, four feet around the property. We've obtained, um, variances for that. And that's also to contain the septic system, uh, in the front yard, because we have to maintain the separation from groundwater. So fill is coming in and the yard is coming up. So the, the path being the least part of resistance, you look at the covered porch where it's 15.5 feet from the Southern line, you know, that's where your access is end off of the southern portion of the house to, to gain that path. The rest of it, there's no access because of the, the walls and the buffer area. So you're not encouraged to or able to walk through that buffer area once established. Okay, I like that. So where, um, I'm sorry, you just had a different diagram up that I couldn't quite grasp, but if I'm walking up from the dock and I'm going through the meadow, I think it's great. It's being hidden visually and it's curling around. How do I actually gain access to the house? You could either come in. Is that from, what you, you can come in from either porch. There's two porches where you can gain access to the house on the southern and side and, and the southwestern side. And on the southwestern side, are there stairs that um, take you up that four foot um, elevation? Correct. Where do are they shown? They're not, they're, shown. Not on, they're not on the survey. It, it would be interesting to have a section. Um, I, if if I'm looking at this a proposed retaining wall with a fence, so you got a swimming pool. Um, so the fence on top of the retaining wall will be how high? There, there. Um, it has to be thirty six inches. For a swimming pool? 48 inch, 40, 42 inches rather, I'm sorry. For a swimming pool? Yes. No, but you get the benefit of the retaining wall as part of the fencing. No, the retaining wall backs, if I understand it, that grade comes to the top of the retaining wall. For the house. Right. For the house side. Yeah. So you would still need a pool fence from that grade upward, correct? Yeah, look at the, look at the house to the bottom of the screen, two-story frame house. Now, that looks, if I'm looking at this, it looks like a non-conforming pre-existing. That's correct. But, but that's, I mean, 
they're going to be looking at, at some real uh, obstruction there, aren't they? Who is? I'm sorry. The neighbor to the south or to the... I mean, they, they've, they've looked at the plans. They've, they've seen it at the ARB and at this level, and they, right. they, they, they have no issue with it. Okay. And... Uh, I, it just it, in in the future uh, it would be interesting to see a section because this is a project about a section. It's not about a plan, meaning that there's a lot of contour changes, and that's information that I think graphically wouldn't be too difficult to um, uh, to express. Sure. I mean, we I was thinking because we had everything outside of seventy five. I, I could have done that. I mean, that's. While I have the mic, I'd just like to say that um, I thought Mary Ann's observation was interesting. I think the, the curvilinear path is, is more interesting than a straight shot. But what really I think should drive a dock is are, are two things. One of which is can a boat get there? You know, there's different contours, um, on, you know, in, in, in the water that may or may not preclude. Um, a boat getting there. But more importantly, or as important, are the view lines for the neighbors. So if we did a straight shot from the bottom of the drawing, straight shot out to the a pier, then that would be right, right up against uh, the adjacent properties um, property line. One could make the argument that maybe if you're putting in something like this, that it should be towards the center of the property and not to the to the property line. So, so we, we kind of have it centered here. I mean, we're a third of the yeah. way south of the line. I'm um, supporting your I'm supporting yeah. your proposal. I, yeah, I, that's yeah, how I'm and, hearing and, it. And I think to that end, just just a point on that is the Southampton Town Trustees, which are also a, a, a permitting agency in the dock process, requires right. that your dock and any boat you can tie up to it stay inside of your property lines if you were to extend them into the water. So yeah. the intent of putting it here is if you were to dock a boat on either side here yeah. or parallel, it still maintains inside of your property boundaries. Yeah. That's pretty consistent with most agencies. I, nothing that I saw in here alarmed me. I thought it was well-placed for that purpose. And do, you have the, do you have the dock permit yet, Brian? Uh, yes, I do. We, okay. we have a dock permit from Southampton Town Trustees, DEC, and Army Corps of Engineers. And theoretically, that involved, to Will's point, an evaluation of the contours of the subsurface there and so forth. We did have to provide them with uh, depth soundings to, to show yeah. that it, at mean low tide, there's a minimum of two and a half feet of water. Hmm. So and we do I, have that on file, Herb. I did review that. Um, I can get to that plan if I stop this share, but uh, that, that all checks out with the property. Yeah. I'm fine I, with that. I, I am um, still confused as to how people in the house access the path. From, from either porch, Marianne. Show me the stairs. How do the stairs work? There are no stairs. I mean, they're not gonna jump down. If it's a four foot elevation, they're not gonna just jump down or climb up a four the, foot. The, the whole thing is not there. It's grading to the walls. Um, I can get you a, a picture of the stairs. I don't have a picture of the stairs, but the two porches provide access from uh, different vantage points to that path. Okay, am I the only one stuck on this? If I am, so, I just- Mary Ann, are you asking if the steps to go up to the porch at that 15-5, do they go into that uh, side yard setback? Well, I wasn't even thinking about that, but that's a good point. Um, I was just, I just see- so You are allowed stairs to, to do that. Pardon me? You are allowed stairs into the setback for purposes of ingress and egress. Okay. But what about the additional 25 foot non-fertilization area you're showing? Will the, you envision the steps going into that or will they no, be no, set no, back from that? No, they're, they're, they're not there. And everything is outside of the 75 feet. So okay. there you'd go down where the, where this, you're walking where the sign set, where the survey that's up says drainage plan per PW Grosser consulting. That's, that's the area. Okay. Um, Brian, I, I will just add on to what Marianne's saying. I think the line of question is appropriate that this retaining wall seems to have a height of 10 feet and just in grade here. What? So it's anywhere from four to five feet of uh, grade differential here. I'm happy to have the architect provide. Grade, I'll have the architect provide a section. 
Yep. So right. you'll provide that information. I can provide right. that information. That, that's the question. I think it's very appropriate. Um, any other questions um, by members of the committee? I, I I would just like, maybe Chick has the numbers. You said 10 feet. Are there yeah. top of wall um, spot elevations on this drawing? I only saw, I saw one right here. Bottom of wall 5.5, .5, top of wall 10. And I see one here in the front. So the two places where the wall is called out, it had a top elevation of 10. So I'm mm -hmm. assuming they're carrying that throughout the wall because there's no other data correct. to suggest otherwise. That's correct. There's a few spot elevations for bottom of wall um, that are where you have top of wall and one additional one here. So uh it, it's a four to five foot wall based on what I'm reading. Is there on the water side, is there something to prevent somebody from falling off? I'm just looking at this. Uh, on the, on the, so you got a five foot uh, drop off from a 10 foot O to a five foot five. Is there something that's going to prevent somebody from falling off of that, Brian? Um, it, we had spoken to the inspector and he's going to make a determination if a, if a fence is required, then we'll go to the ARB to put a fence, uh, fence there. How could it not be required? It's the codes, what, 30, 36 inches, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you, we would have to, they have to get an ARB, they got to get a fence up there outside. It's still outside of 75 feet. It would be. That's not an ARB. That's a DOB. No, no, no. I'm both, saying for both. the style of it or how we do it, because it would be on top of that wall. Uh-huh. And if, if one's required, we'll put one up there. No, no question. I see glazed panels there, Brian. The which? I see glazed panels yeah. across the entire wall. Yeah, could be. <laughs> I guess that's not well, in our uh, purview. But... Right, that's all kind of outside our purview, but it's- It is, it is. Um, so um, any other questions? Should I open it to the public? Is there anybody here um, in the audience who would like to speak to this application? I would. Can you introduce yourself and give your address, please? Hi, my name is Gail Brusewitz Lopinto, and I live at 26 Vitali Silly Avenue. Um, I'm understanding that I was just outside of the 200 foot mark, so I was not. Um, send any letters about the development of, of this property um, prior to the, um, the application because I am outside of the 200 foot mark. However, I am very curious to know um, a few things about the grades and the, um, the drainage system that is, am I reading this correctly? That it, it's a drainage system that is set for a 2.5 inch rainfall? That is correct. Have you ever seen Glover Street after a nor'easter? I have. So, um, and what is the average rainfall on a nor'easter? Just out of I, curiosity. That I don't know, but I know the code requires two and a half inch rainfall events and that we contain all of our runoff for hardscaping roof structures uh, and otherwise, which would help that situation because current houses there do not go um i got people talking over each other so i heard brian saying that you're meeting what the code requires uh Gail, i can't hear your comment back sorry i'm curious as to which direction the drainage will go because i i again i live on this little dirt road and i also have a i'm curious as to do we still have right of way of of vitali silly avenue all the way through or is it in no. there's there are deeded rights which remain that's not being obstructed or blocked um currently there is no access all the way through that will change and the water doesn't get directed toward any neighbor it, it percolates down so there's no direction of water, you have to maintain your water on your own property. Okay, well, is percolating down a realistic expectation of what will happen in, in that 
It is based on what's required. Village. It is so, based on what's required, yes. Jack, can you speak to that? You've taken a look at the ground wells that are contemplated? Yes. Uh, so we have a detailed drainage plan that was prepared by PW Grocer Consulting. Uh, it has subsurface leaching galleys. It is based on uh, test holes that are actually on the survey and uh, show that there's adequate depths to groundwater for this installation. It does provide runoff containment, as was discussed, for a two and a half inch rainfall. Uh, it has the proper runoff coefficients. Uh, these are the areas of the leaching galleys. These are the connections from the impervious surfaces that are contributing to those. You can see there'll be 14 <laughs> proposed storm drainage leaching galleys in this area and eight in this area. Uh, everything that I saw on the drainage plan did check out in accordance with uh, village requirements. And there, there could potentially be rainfalls in excess of that amount. Um, the, the stormwater system does not account for uh, soil infiltration capacity. So there could be some additional storage um, but, you know, just like any situation, uh, you could have greater rainfall and that, that um, does contribute to flooding throughout an area. Uh, but I, I don't see any issues with this from the standpoint of conformance to design requirements, depth to groundwater, and um, containing runoff from the impervious and other surfaces. So out of curiosity, can you tell me how many cubic feet of fill was brought into this property over the winter when I was seeing major dump trucks with major fill going in here. And I'm just curious to know how much it actually was. So fill is being brought in for the site next door that's under construction. Oh, so different address? That's cur the current, the currently the house next door at 10 Vitali Silly is under construction. So, but there was fill brought in all winter long and but dumped you, on that are whole you, area. Are you sure, Gail, that it went to 14 and not to 10, which is an active construction site? This, okay. this apparently doesn't have a building permit yet. So that's, I don't- That's correct. There, I can tell you, that there's no building going on on this site. Uh, I was with the inspector last week at the neighboring site where they were pouring footings. Okay, so there there was no fill put in whatsoever at 14 Vitali Silly Avenue. For, fill has not been brought in the 14. There's been there was fill left on the roadway when it was being used for 14, <clears throat> but no fill. The the property at 14 has not been filled. No. Um, I just wonder if I misheard you, Brian. The the fill that was left on the road, it wasn't for 14. You said it was for 14. For 10, so I'm sorry. If it was left in front of 14, it's 410, because 10 is the only one that, I'm sorry, under construction. Right, okay. So then um, so uh, my question just is, there was absolutely no fill brought in for 14 Vitali Sally Avenue, is that correct? To my knowledge, no fill has been brought in yet for 14, correct? So um, this is currently um, a non-developed lot, correct? It's a vacant lot, correct. Um, so um, I'm just wondering in terms of like the concern that the neighbor is expressing, um, it's a relatively small house. There are certainly a number of ground wells that are going in. Is it possible that there's actually going to be better drainage in the neighborhood because this site is going to be um, absorbing more of the water that's falling on the property lines? How, uh, that's probably the most naive I, question. Do, I don't. I can't answer that question. I, I don't know that answer to that question. I, I can I can well, say I, that the lots are going that, to be improved. Marianne, that's called a softball. But I. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking Chick actually. Oh, Chick know, okay. actually has some idea of what that might mean. I have used that argument <laughs> on, 
applications, I do believe it is true. Uh, you can see from the survey that there is a high point right here. This is at six feet. Uh, so there's kind of a divide on the property where water really, uh, for the most part, does not run to the east. It runs toward the west. Uh, and this at four feet is a little bit of a low point. Uh, there's no storage. There is a runoff coefficient that can be applied to landscaped areas on a vacant lot. And the fact that this is containing water to a two and a half inch rainfall event, you could make the argument, and I don't have the calculations, but you can do the calculations to show that, you know, this will retain more water. Uh, what's happening now is water probably runs down to this low point and then runs north toward 10 Vitelli Silly. Um, and that will not happen with this plan because the entire area plus the impervious is being uh, contained in drainage structures. So it may be subtle, but I, I would agree that there is evidence that uh, drainage would not be increased and would potentially be decreased based on the storage of the property. Wait, you just said drainage, meaning water flowing off the property. Correct. Correct, okay. Okay. And um, one last question, um, just out of curiosity, again, with the volume of, um, of trucks and, and surveyors and, and such that have been going up and down Batali, Silly Avenue all winter long, there are some very serious potholes. And I was just curious as to if either owner was going to assume responsibility for repairs to the road. So Vitali Silly is a, is a privately owned road uh, and there's no maintenance agreement intact, but I will speak to the applicants that are developing those lots uh, to see. I, I don't have an answer, but I can I can ask you that and um, you can get reach me or call me and I can give you a follow up on that. I can, I'm happy to give you my number. I'll take it, thank you. Sure, it's 631-765-4321. Mm -hmm. Wow. It'd probably be great for community relations. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. Um, any other comments from the public? Um, can I have a motion, please, to close the public hearing? I move. Thank you. Second? Thank you, Will. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, May I have a motion to ask Chick Voorhees to draft a permit for 14 Vitali Silly Avenue? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Will. Second? I'll second. Thank you, Herb. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Okay, so um, the next item we have new business um, is um, 8 John Street. Can I have a motion to open the public hearing, please? Well, Thank you, John. Uh, second, please. A second. Thank you, Will. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so um, is there somebody here to speak um, to this application? Yes, hello. Um, can you introduce yourself, please? And give yes, us hi, can you, can you see me? My name is Taylor Sturm. I'm from Belang Associates on behalf of Claxton House LLC, who's the applicant. And uh, that's for 8 John Street. Thank you. Hi, so uh, it is new business, but it's also sort of old business. Uh, I'm sure the board will remember this project um, came before you last year, last winter, I guess just before the COVID pandemic happened. And um, the, the doc was sort of bifurcated from the rest of the application, as you remember, because we wanted to go in for an approval for that. And that was agreed upon. Um, at this point, what we've done is we've shortened the doc, which had originally been proposed, but there was an issue that the board had with the view from Main Street, as I'm sure you all remember. And I can try to pull up 
um, the revised plans for you, which I'm sure you've all seen at this point. Um, I will make you a, a co-host, uh, Taylor. Give me one please, second. yeah, that would be great. Okay, you're ready. Okay. <laughs> so, um, oh, okay. Can you all see this okay? Yes. So um, last year, the original proposed dock was, I think it was 26 feet long or something like that. And now it's been shortened to 23 feet, which is actually only one foot shorter than the last time this has been reviewed by the board. There was one or two shortenings that occurred before that, if I recall correctly. And so as I remember from my notes of the previous hearings, the environmental impact of the stock wasn't necessarily a tremendous concern. I, um, the village's consultant, Chick, I think had said that the dock is sort of the most environmentally friendly way to go about traversing this area. Um, but the issue again was the view, um, if I remember correctly. But this is now the, um, the current plan here. And I think that's sort of uh, where we stand. So I wonder if the, if the board has any questions about it, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, do you have a section? I'm asking the Will Sharp question. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can see what we wanted to do is keep enough length to get past this area of riprap and debris. If you could see where my cursor is, it's kind of right here because that would cause something of a, a, a dangerous issue. And there's also um, a fair amount of muscle beds along the shoreline too that we wanted to keep intact. So we tried to come up with sort of, um, I wanna say a, a compromising length where we could pull it in as much, as much as we can, but still allow for sort of a reasonable use of the stock. And there's actually, um, if you want, I can pull this up, which is sort of, mm. it's just a drone photograph that shows where how the dock was originally proposed and the uh, the new limit of this proposed dock. Uh, Herb Sample here is one of the, uh, as I recall correctly, if I, if I recall correctly, one of the concerns uh, that some of the board members had had to do with the practicality of getting the uh, the, the, the boats, the uh, canoes, whatever they are, up and down out of the water. Have you given that any more thought? Uh, yes and no. I want to say that it's not something that I have been, um, I want to say, terribly concerned about, only because I, I, want, I don't want to say it's not my business how they, how they use it, but I, I don't think that there's necessarily um, a danger. For example, at, at high tide, the the distance between this, the top and the bottom of this is a f maybe two feet or a foot and a half or something, which is, okay. I would say that's pretty adequate. Um, yeah, that, well, that, that kind of answers my question. Yeah, but I, I haven't, have... but I, what I just meant was I didn't, I haven't like put together no. some in-depth analyses about that kind of thing, but. No, no, but one of the concerns was the practicality of it. And in fact, in practice would the owners or anybody just kind of bypass the dock and transverse the <clears throat> wetlands, which I don't think anybody really wanted. So no, that's, and that, also that's the point of my question. I was gonna say that um, also as a part of the, the, the upland redevelopment, which had been proposed, um, uh, approved by the Harbor Committee, that shoreline, you can see there's like plantings all around it in this yes. illustration, because that's yes. all, it's all kind of like just a fragmite sort of um, slope there now. So that's gonna be all replanted and, and um, yeah, restored. So, so the idea is that we're not gonna be transversing that, you know, dragging a kayak down the right. slope, walking down the slope. This will actually be an environmental benefit in that. In that, 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 that was the concern as I remember it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to say something. I have been driving, every time I drive by there, I look at the stick that's in the water and I have noticed more repeatedly, I know the owner said they wanted their friends to come in with a motorboat because we kept stressing that it seems rather crazy to be hiking kayaks up 12 feet. But I notice probably every tide or frequently in the past several months and all through the winter, at low tide, it is mud down there. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I think these sticking up 12 feet is, I find that for just the viewing purposes is wrong, but I think for that whole estuary, which I would call it, I don't chip, kick on in on this one, but to have, to think you could get a motorboat in there, I think would be disturbing. Uh, and I don't think it's practical. And I think you're using the kayaks as an excuse to get a dock to try and get a motorboat in there, which I think would do more harm. That area is on the slope, has a fair amount of prickly pear cactus. Uh, and I think you would do less harm if you really wanted kayaks just to drag it up and down that slope or put mm -hmm. wood chips or something there. But I think this is an unrealistic dock for a very shallow area and one of the last sort of little coves. I think it's an important riparian area. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I can't necessarily speak to the, um, the use. I do remember when there was a discussion about the, uh, the motor boats. Um, I think probably <laughs> nine times out of 10, it's going to be too shallow to do that. Um, but I can't guarantee that that won't happen. Uh, but I don't, I, I don't think that, that the proposed action is some veiled use for that. Um, that's not the way I understand it anyway. Um, uh, but the applicant let that slip at one point, having people come over for cocktails or lunch or something, but um, sure. I, cut you. I, I apologize. Which, no, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Which I don't think it is um, in violation of chapter, you know, 285 of the code is having people over for cocktails, but- um, Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> But um, so you're, in speaking to, in speaking to the view because I, I know it has come up in the past. Um, I'll show this um, this sort of uh, illustration here that I've put together. So I don't know how well you can see these red lines, but here I've just put three circles which represent observers on this little bridge where this is where Otter Pond drains into um, Upper Sag Harbor Cove through this little area. And while I do, I, I understand. Um, the notion about this being a small little cove and, and it's um, uh, the, the importance that way. It is still the south side, it is still hardened, it, it's bulkheaded and it's already impacted in this way. And these red lines represent lines of sight. And it's not until you get all the way to the southern limit that this structure even is, I wanna say impacting the already um, impacted view. And this is an example of what it's going to look like in from this point of view. So on the left, you have a view from the north side of this little bridge, and it's actually almost hard to see, which wasn't uh, it wasn't necessarily intentional on my point on my part. But you zoom in here, uh, what you're able to see is this does kind of overlap with an area that's already disturbed and it's already. Um, can you point out with your cursor where this proposed dock is on that picture? Oh yeah, sure, sure. I'm sorry if you can't see it. Um, so let me zoom in just a little bit further. And this is where it's going to be. And as you can see from the vantage point of the, um, the Main Street Bridge, it does overlap with that point that sticks out. So, so, so that's the dock, the proposed dock that we're seeing there against the, um, the land behind it with the tree on it? Yes, and uh, oh. so if, if you look at this, the reason um, that is, is because, uh, let's see, whoops. Let's so just zoom out a little bit. The line of sight from this bridge, and you can follow my cursor, it, the furthest thing out in this case is this point. And so the dock is for the most part eclipsed by that. So. Um, yeah, but you see the bridge, you see the dock. Rather than seeing that point, you see the dock. Sure, but that's, I, I mean, I understand that's, but this that's a natural yeah. area as opposed to a dock well, structure. I what I'm seeing here is two bulkheads and phragmites. So I don't disagree that it's it's pleasant, but it's not like the um the dock in this case is going to be blocking the, the water view, the sky view, uh any of these sort of uh, more natural things. It's an already man-made impacted view. Well, if we have the kayaks that they're suggesting in red and green and yellow and orange, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm being a little facetious. No, sure, sure. That, it, it, that's an issue. And it just, it's a man-made structure as opposed to seeing Phragmites and, you know, whatever that, that land mass is that forms that side of the opening. Sure. 
Of course. Uh, there's, that, also, there's also an osprey nest. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's any issue about pro you know, proximity to an osprey nest um, that we can drop on this project, but um, I, I go by this on a regular basis as well. And I guess that just aesthetically, it would be nice to try to keep what we have as opposed to ad adding more, um, mm. th th I guess, recreation. And I know recreation is important, but th this just, it, it seems like, as I've said before, the solution is, is the old, um, on, the, on the bulkhead, putting a step down that way. And it's, it would be pulling it further east and away from the view mm. corridor. Um, and it would satisfy the need to get down to the water. Um, and um, I think that it's disingenuous to say that you, that you walk along that bridge and, um, not, and that the dock would be hidden by the bulkhead to the west. I, I, that's not my perception. Sure. I think, um, Will. Sorry. I'm sorry. I think that's a great suggestion, Will. Some sort of steps down to the, you know, built in and down to the, to the water. I think that's a better solution in my opinion. And I've also, I've forwarded a picture to Doris of when Taylor, I think we met you there, Will and I were there mm -hmm. and you set up that uh, dock. That yes. wild contraption. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I forwarded that to Doris. I don't know if she can put that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was supposed to be um, some it's a way to visualize it. I don't really know how well that kind of came out, but um, it was a good try, I think. So I apologize. I lost you for a moment. We're having some amazing thunderstorms here in uh, Alabama, and um, I'm sitting here in a dark house. Oh, my goodness. A scary <laughs> yeah, so, movie. Uh, yeah, it's scary movie. And um, uh, anyway, I'm on my phone, so please oh continue. Taylor, if you how hear much a water... freight train, get in the bathtub. <laughs> uh, Taylor, how much water is at the bulkhead line there? Um, so are you talking about kind of in this area? Over yes, here? Yeah, yes. It's, at, I mean, at low tide, it's probably comparable to, to maybe over here. We haven't done any sort of official depths uh, measurements in there, but it's, it's, not very, it's not very deep from what I understand. It's also actually a little bit on the precarious side. There is a considerable amount of debris along this bulkhead, including some glass and stuff like that, which might be um, a bit of a hazard. And just kind of responding to, to what Will had said, um, I don't necessarily know how much of a sort of, I wanna say alternatives, alternatives analysis um, we've done about this. We did consider that, but I think that sort of method of, of going off the side of the bulkhead was ultimately considered uh, not feasible, maybe you know because of the, the depth or because of the debris. But here's sort of an interesting uh, point about this: is that you know here's here's the, the the same similar structure next door, and I think that that's even more of a visual eyesore than the dock would be in in this rendering. So um, that's another sort of thought against that. And in, in chapter 285, it, it, it does allow for docks. It doesn't say, you know, you have to do one of these sort of uh, thorough right. alternative analysis before you get to a variance or something like that. So that's just another point about that, which is why I think- I guess uh, as, a, as a mariner, I would, I would look for clues at a site. Mm -hmm. And as a builder, um, et cetera. <laughs> and and when, when I walked on the site with Lily and others, um, walking around and all of a sudden the solution was right there um, in, in its earlier inception. And I, I imagined a um, step going down to the water that comes out three, three feet or so, which is about the, the distance of, the, of that existing davit um, that takes you down to the dock and that solves a lot of problems. And in fact, that's the deepest part of that channel is on um, that whatever that side is, that's the deepest part. It, it shoals on the right. Um, so if you were to get a boat, if you wanted to have a, a power boat coming in there, that's where you would come anyway, you would come right there. And that, that's, a, that's a deeper place than, than where the dock is. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that history says that there's a solution um, in the man-made man 
and man-made environment that we should probably acknowledge and let um, the other place where there are muscles and other uh, aspects of nature trying to happen, let that be. That's, that's, I, I guess I have felt like that for a long time on this site. Right. Um, you may have covered this while I was uh, offline for a while. What is the height of the dock compared to the height of the bulkhead? Uh, I think they're pretty comparable, especially in the beginning part of the dock, and then it drops down about two feet. So you can see this uh, this grade here, this existing grade where the top of the dock is, uh -huh. is um, about the same grade as the bulkheads on either side. So, so you know, you were talking about uh, section 285, and that's one consideration. Um, the other consideration, yikes which Whoa. is um, near and dear to my heart, is the LWRP. Sure. And that's um, the view shed. And mm -hmm. that's still the big obstacle in my mind. Um, um, were, you on the, were you on the call when I was showing these, those view shed documents? Yeah, okay. I still don't like it. I, I understand, but so just thinking about what Will was saying, um, you know, if you put these these Davit things, I you know I don't want to repeat myself, but that is sort of going to be in a similar area, and you are impacting the view shed in a more tangible way because you'll be blocking the view of the water. In it, it's kind of a wash; it's basically the same thing in a lot of ways, but it's not any necessarily any better, especially if you put a little platform out there, a three foot platform, which actually would. Um, if you're looking at, at this document, three feet out of here is going to end up being comparable to, to coming out that same amount there. I well, disagree. I, I think so. I disagree. Yeah, I disagree too. Um, should we open this to the public? Are there people here? Is the, <laughs> has the committee asked all the questions that they have? And Lily, just to what you were saying about looking at this every time you go up and down Main Street. I do too. <laughs> I know and, we uh, need to get that kind of stick with out. dismay that I saw this coming back on the agenda. <laughs> um, is there anybody from the public who would like to address this application? Lily, we can take the stick out by the way. Uh, that's a condition of the permit or something like that. Oh, that, well, <laughs> I'd just like you to remove the stick. I, I'm, I know, I'm just- Thank uh, you, that would be lovely. Marianne, I see Tiffany Scalata raise a hand. Okay. Tiffany, would you like to speak? Introduce yourself. I just went deaf. We hear you now. Okay, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Tiffany Scarlato, 45 Division Street, Sag Harbor. Um, on behalf of the owner of 326 Main Street, who happens to be my mother. Um, so round two on this, I guess. Um, still have the same concerns that I had last time, which was uh, LWRP, the view shed involved. Um, I don't see it changing all that much. And we haven't talked much about the storage and what that's going to look like. I, I, I know the chair alluded to that. Um, but I think we're in the same position that we were last time with not much difference. Um, right. I know they don't quite like the idea of a lift, but that's what we have on our property. And it's worked very well for probably 40 years at this point. Um, you know, as, as Lily accurately said, it's mostly mud there and has been for most of the winter. So I'm not sure even that getting into a kayak there is really a practical thing to do. Um, but I, I like, and I agree with the boards. <coughs> just reiterate them. There's a view shed issue from here that we just can't seem to get around. And I just thank the board for their consideration and keeping on this. Thank you. Doris, do you see anybody else who's um, looking to speak? I, mm, I'm looking right now. I don't. Mm. No. Okay. No hands. Um, so, Fred, what are our alternatives here? Marianne, maybe before 
before council, I, if you want me to make a couple yeah. of remarks just on the pending application and then Fred can kind of outline the options. Sure. So um, my observation is that the comments of the committee are very consistent with what uh, they had indicated before. <clears throat> this is the aerial photograph. And, um, you know, one of the big concerns last time was that there are no other structures in this section, which is the outlet of Otter Pond to uh, Upper Side Harbor Cove. The subject property being here, the proposed um, dock access being here. Uh, I looked at the original application and Taylor, I actually gave you a little more credit than what you indicated. It seemed to me as though this one is two and a half feet farther uh, landward than the last version of the prior plan. <clears throat> and that went through a few iterations. Um, but that being said, you know, I think the visual renderings do show that it does interfere with the Phragmites area on the property, which actually does screen, you know, some of the more structural improvements at this point. It does introduce a new structure where none exists currently. Um, and I would like to point out that under, I'm just gonna see if I can uh, do some, I'm gonna stop this share for just a second so I can get something else in front of me. Uh, there, there is a provision under um, chapter 285, it's under 9B. And one of the standards is to minimize the visual impact of site development and provide sufficient visual buffering. So that's one of the considerations that's valid under chapter 285 and one that certainly has come up and been expressed uh, by a number of speakers. Uh, the application also included a coastal assessment form and there's a portion that the committee can, can review and kind of complete, but there are two, sub, two policies or sub policies that are relevant. One is to provide public visual access to coastal lands and waters or open space at all sites where physically practicable or practical. And that's sub policy 7.3. And the other is policy nine that talks about enhanced visual quality and protect scenic resources in the village of Sag Harbor. And more specifically under sub policy 9.1, uh, protect and Im improve visual quality in the village of Sag Harbor. So at this time, you know, we've heard from the public, we've heard from the applicant. The application has not changed dramatically in my opinion. Uh, it would be a new structure in this portion of the outlet of Otter Pond and um, you know, it's really up to the committee to determine if they're consistent with um, 285-9B and those LWRP policies. But, but what I can say is you've been very consistent in having concerns over this application. Uh, so I'll leave it at that uh, at this time and, and Fred can certainly comment on what, what our options are. Yeah, I, I would just further add that, you know, further on in the statute, there's standards with regard to docks itself, and there's eight things for the committee to consider, and in, including whether the dock will despoil views from public parkland or roadways. So there's the general standard that Chick mentioned, but there's also a specific uh, language on uh, uh, view sheds when it, when it comes to docks from public roadways and public parks, which is exactly what the board has been talking about uh, both right. times that they've, right. they've discussed this. So, you know, you have an open hearing, uh, you know, the first thing I, I guess, if, if there's no further testimony is, is to, you, you know, we close the hearing, but um, I, I would just, you know, the decisions the board to make, but in addition to the provision that Chick pointed you to, I would also point you to the provision uh, relating specifically to docs that uh, I think you is consistent with the uh, the concerns that the members of the committee have have raised the first time with this application as well as tonight. Mm -hmm. Sure, and if I could just uh, say something, I want to say that we um, in in making changes to it, we have tried to to take as much consideration about that as possible. That's why we have shortened it to be as least visible from the road as possible while still 
um, while still giving the, the applicant the use that, that he's seeking. But we, we have tried to, to do that as best we can. Certainly make it so, so hard to see. I don't think that we um, think that you're being dishonest in representing um, your efforts. I just think that we, at least speaking for myself, basically just feel that there's not any doc that's really going to um, be acceptable. Um, could I have, unless there's somebody else who wants to speak, Doris, you see any other hands? No, Marianne. Um, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? Make that motion. Thank you. Um, second, please. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so uh, this doesn't come up that often. So am I looking to make a motion to uh, reject this application, Fred? What's the proper um, terminology? How do well, I, I, I think we usually direct a chick to write a determination. Uh, in this case, it's a denial and, and not a uh, not an approval. So or not a permit. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, as you say, you know, denials, you know, they happen, but, you know, I think it's something that you would maybe direct Chick and I to, to work on, on uh, determination denying this um, because it's a denial and we want, we want to make sure we make all the appropriate findings. So I, I think a motion along those lines would be appropriate. That's great. Um, well, can I get a motion, please? To just, uh, I just one one quick question. So, in the resolution that Fred and Chuck will work on, that would not in any way uh, prejudice the applicant uh, from rethinking how they would approach this. For example, uh, going in the direction of the steps down from the existing bulkhead or something like that. It, it would not. I mean, what what would be drafted is going to be specific to the proposal that's before the board, before the committee. Can I ask a question first before there's a motion? Uh, I'd, I'd like to ask whether the applicant wants to uh, consider that. making a modification to the proposal before the committee makes the determination. Yeah, thank you. I was actually going to, um, I didn't want to interrupt, but I was going to ask if that could happen because um, I think there's certainly a way that maybe it could be modified. I'll have to, you know, think about it, talk to other people about it, but that would maybe be more helpful than, because then otherwise we'll have to come back in and it'll be a whole process. So that would be helpful, I think, if, if the board is open to that idea. So you, I think so we're open, your, I'm sorry. I think, I think we're open to that idea, but speaking for myself, um, tiptoeing this dock back another six inches, another foot is not, the type of change that would get my vote or my view to go from a no to a yes. But can I ask a question um, of the board? Um, so we, we've had some discussion about putting, uh, you know, a three foot platform up off the bulkhead or something like that. But I just personally am having trouble seeing how that is a different impact to the view than uh, the dock is just it doesn't seem like it's necessarily uh any better or something like that so i guess i'm just i just want to know just so when i go back and, and try to think about it what would be what what would be more agreeable but also i'm, I'm more interested in why i guess if that makes sense i don't know if that's something that is appropriate to I, ask but I, I didn't really hear and maybe i was offline during that time but i didn't <laughs> really hear proposed a three-foot um, extension into the creek from the bulkhead. Was oh, I, that... thought, I thought Will had mentioned something like that. You're, you must have been offline. What I said, yeah. what I said was that um, the man-made bulkhead was a, a starting point for me conceptually and the existing davits, which maybe protrude, let's just say 36 inches. Um, it, it, I could imagine uh, steps going down to the water in solving a problem. Um, it's pulled back from the view corridor. It's pulled back from the natural, as it were, phragmite 
area and uh, it would help the owners uh, get access to the water. Um, so I'm not sure what you're suggesting. You're talking about the bulkhead going out three feet and then having stairs going down no. from that. No, no, stairs parallel no. with the bulkhead. Yeah. Almost I'll tell like you, a floating not, platform, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not so warm and co cuddly about that idea that's either. That's, that's my, fine. My that's thinking. fine. I have to say, having what you know, we've all walked that area. I think the stairs from that area where it's already kind of mushed down, where the people enter by the mussel beds and the prickly pear cactus, some sort of stair built into there, if that's something that's doable. I mean, I see it along Havens Beach, but I think that would be less impactful in the site corridor and in general. And then you, I don't think there should be a motorboat up in that area. And I think that would be destructive towards the habitat, the habitats there. Sure. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't mean this like in a contradictory way, but in terms of like the view shed, I think that the, the documents that I had shown do show at least that if you put, let's say like Lily was just saying a, a stairway down there, it's, it's very comparable to that, I think. Uh, I mean, three stairs, I think, is a slightly different picture than a dock. Sure. I agree, but I'm not feeling so great about three stairs either. I mean, I don't feel great I, about them either, but. Right. Mm. So I, I, I kind of think that there's not that kind of water access here, but I'm just one person. All right. Well, maybe instead of a denial, then I would ask that we could just try to figure something else out if the board is, is open to that idea. It is, but I, you know, this is what happens occasionally is sometimes I feel that we're all spinning the clients, you know, their time and their money. And I, I start to become uneasy about that for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm just not really sure that there's something that's going to really change me to a yes on this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could try it, but I just hate to see them, you know, poking more thousands of dollars into something that just might not be possible. Of course. My, but, my um, view. No, I think I, you're, that's, that's a pretty valid, that's a valid opinion. I just want to be able to talk to the homeowner yeah. and the applicant about this to see if, because I know okay. it is important to them, so. Right. Uh, I'd, I'd like to say that I, I totally agree with the chairwoman on her previous comments. I do however, think it's worth giving these guys one more shot and maybe they can come up with something that's kind of creative and that will address some of these concerns right. would be my recommendation. Thank you. I, I, we certainly, I certainly don't want to prevent them from doing that. I just get concerned Understood. about, you know, the issue. So um, I think then what I'm hearing is, is that the um, applicant is requesting that we table this um, application until the June 3rd meeting. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so, please. Okay, so um, can I get a motion to table this application until the June 3rd meeting? I'll make a motion. And a second, please. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, tell. Taylor. So long. So long. Um, I'm having trouble reading my notes here. Let's see. <laughs> I am in the total dark here. Okay, so the, other, the only other thing I see here is that um, we have um, to review the, um, the waterways law chapter, the amended um, chapter 278 um, from a, a waterfront consistency review. Um, is that correct, Doris? Am I reading this, my handwritten agenda out correctly? That is correct, Marianne. Okay. Um, uh, Chick, do you want to take the lead on this? Uh, yes. Is this uh, visible? Yes. yes. Okay. So some months back, uh, the waterway law had come up and... Um, it was referred by the village board to the Harbor Committee under chapter 278 for a 
consistency determination. There was a fairly detailed report prepared that we went through. Um, and th these are a little tough because we have 30 days to respond. And depending on our calendar, we don't always have a lot of time to prepare or have things ready for a meeting. Um, but the bottom line here is that there are a couple of changes uh, that I may actually defer to John Parker if you would like more details. Uh, but the changes did not seem to significantly affect the consistency determination that was adopted previously. And I think, John, I hate to put you on the spot, but I think you did speak at the recent village board meeting. Um, so this resolution basically uh, goes through that history and reaffirms the um, finding that the uh, activities are consistent with the LWRP. Uh, so Go ahead, so Mary, John, sorry. can I ask you to limit your comments to the nuances that have changed since we last approved this? Not going back to um, the original law, but um, to the original or to the the most recent draft. Uh, sure, Chick, do you have the date when we last approved this? I think it's in the resolution. I hope it is. Waterfront consistency, um, December. No, that doesn't seem right. 2018. It doesn't seem right. That's what I saw. It was more it recent than that. Right. Yeah. Actually, Liz Vale prepared this um, and I just got it late today and I apologize. Right. Uh, I don't have that handy. I can start to research the file to see if I can get that. Well, forward John, you gave a pretty concise um, review of, of what the um, what this law entails in terms of um, improvements over the previous law. Um, do you have your notes? Do you just want to run through that? It'd probably take less time than Chick finding um, that date and you're trying to do just a, a gap analysis there. Uh, give, give me, if, if you want me to go through the whole, the whole thing, just give me a moment here. Uh, I, want you, I want you to do what you feel is adequate for um, the, these purposes right now in terms of the consistency review. I don't know if we need to do the whole thing. I'm gonna let you be the judge of that. Uh, hold on, I, I, I just brought up my, my, my notes that I used when I presented this to, to, the, to the board. Um, so, uh, all right, so, so, so quickly, we've got legislation in 2016 by, by New York State uh, granting us additional jurisdiction. Um, going out to the channel, whereas the previous jurisdiction was out to 1,500 feet from, from, from shore. Um, the purpose of, of the current waterway law amendments are to um, uh, put into effect local laws to implement that increased uh, jurisdiction. Um, the, there were some changes to the definitions in the law, but, but only those that were necessary because we're adding an outer mooring area. So thus references to the village mooring area uh, wouldn't be specific enough. So we had to have a, uh, um, a, a, a mooring area inside the breakwater, mooring area outside the breakwater. So that there are those definitions. The outer area is the outer management area or outer mooring area. Um, the, okay, there are no changes to speed zones, uh, anchoring or mooring inside the breakwater um, or the mooring or the resident mooring area within 500 feet outside the breakwater. Um, the area known as the fairway outside the breakwater between 500 and 1500 feet uh, hasn't changed. Uh, there's a definition of it that, that, that's, uh, um, uh, a little bit different, but there's no mooring in that uh, in in that area um, or or long term anchoring. Uh, there was some in the definitions, some differentiation between uh, short term anchoring, long term anchoring, because that that wasn't in the previous previous code, um, because there was no long term anchoring in the in the previous code. Um, the uh, probably one of the most more significant things is re in regards to to aircraft. Uh, the previous code allowed there to be an application for a permit uh, for taxiing within the 1500 foot area. 
um, inside. It could have actually been inside the breakwater as, as well. Um, that has been removed uh, from, from the code or has been proposed to be removed from the code. Instead, uh, taxiing will be allowed in the outer management area or outer mooring area between 1,500 feet and the uh, uh, channel, um, the outer channel, uh, which is the northern border of, of the jurisdictional area. Um, there will be no landing and, and taking off of aircraft within that area, including landing and taking off of helicopters, um, so that the landing and taking off will have to occur outside of the village's area, uh, and then a, a uh, seaplane can taxi inside of the area to, to moor or to um, uh, take on passengers, uh, you know, et, et cetera. The, uh, the no discharge zone, the village has a, a no discharge zone, um, which is, is currently goes out to the village's um, a jurisdictional boundary at, uh, for the, for, for the uh, waterway law and uh, uh, navigation law purposes at 1500 feet. Uh, that's as well being expanded uh, to uh, to the limits of the jur new jurisdictional area, which would be again out to the uh, out to the outer outer channel. Um, it also provides for the uh, village board uh, to recommend or or mandates of the village board recommend uh, procedures for enforcement uh, of the no discharge uh, zone. Uh, New rules for the outer management area. Um, the uh, creation of a, it includes the creation of a recreation no mooring area to the east off Barcelona, uh, roughly equivalent to, to where the eastern boundary of the village is heading north. From, from there over to Barcelona Point, there would be uh, no uh, mooring or, or long term anchoring. Um, In the, in the outer uh, management area, uh, rental moorings will be allowed. In other words, uh, persons can apply for a permit for a mooring, uh, which will be not, not used for their own vessels, but, but could, be, uh, could be rented or, or leased on a long-term or short-term basis. This is different from the provisions inside the breakwater where, where the moorings, uh, with few exceptions, are supposed to be used. Uh, by the, in other words, the owner of the mooring is supposed to be the owner of the boat. Um, uh, permits will be required for extended stay uh, mooring or anchoring. There are some provisions that allow uh, uh, a boat to be there for seven days without, without getting a, a permit. But after that, essentially, they'd, they'd have to have a, a permit. Um, there are insurance requirements uh, for all uh, mooring and anchoring uh, permits um, here. So the, basically the owner of a, uh, of a mooring uh, would have to have insurance. Um, and the, uh, in a situation where there's a vessel that's staying long-term, uh, they would have to have a, a permit. Uh, one of the changes from earlier versions of this law that, that there was some questions about what was a provision whereby the owner of the mooring would be responsible for any damage caused uh, by a, uh, a boat uh, vessel moored to that or mooring or trying to moor to that, to, to that, to that mooring. Um, and there's an exception that's written in here. The exception being if that vessel uh, has insurance, shows proof of the insurance, provides proof of the insurance to the, to, to the village uh, that uh, then the, uh, 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 mooring owner wouldn't necessarily be, be, be responsible. I mean, obviously, New York law and responsibility and, 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 and joint several liability would still, still apply. Uh, but by providing, uh, but by having the vessel owner provide proof of insurance, the mooring owner is at least partially off the, off the hook. Um, it, there's also a new provision, uh, which was of concern to some people, that, that the village would have the authority uh, to limit the number and type of vessels moored or anchored particularly in the outer management area. Um, there was some request that uh, numbers be set or why, haven't, why hasn't the village set a number uh, of, of moorings that will be allowed? And, and, and basically the answer to that is that there's been really no increase in the number of, of vessels moored out there. It's actually a few, 
it's actually in the last couple of years has been a, a smaller number uh, than, in, than in previous years. Uh, but this provision, uh, should that trend reverse itself, uh, this provision would allow the, the board to set a limit on the size, number, or, or type of vessels. Um, and if there are requests for limitations, uh, that those requests could be made to, to the um, Harbor Committee, uh, could be made to the um, East Hampton trustees, which do have some, some joint management uh, responsibility for the area, or directly to the, to the village board. Um, the houseboat rules are clarified and, and uh, basically don't allow uh, houseboats that are not you know, self-propelled from anchoring uh, within, within the area. Um, the next question would be the harbor management uh, chart. Um, and uh, basically the chart number one, which shows the whole area, uh, it has only been changed to add that area from 1500 feet out to the, out to the outer uh, channel, which I think is something like another 3000 feet or so. Um, again, the fairway um, at, at uh, between 1500 and 500 feet and the area between 500 feet and the shore. Um, and the swimming areas, et cetera, are, are, are not to change from previous versions of that, uh, of that chart that, that goes back to, I believe it's 2006. In the, the map number two or chart number two, uh, which is an insert that shows the inner uh, harbor inside the breakwater. And it looks like that's coming up on the screen or an attempt is being made to bring it up on the, on, on the screen right now. Um, the channel has been uh, uh, changed a little bit, uh, uh, partly to, to bring it more into, uh, uh, to be more consistent with, with what had originally been agreed on, uh, actually by resolution of the village board um, uh, 15 years ago, there was some question as to the number of feet that the channel was off uh, from the um, uh, Sag Harbor Yacht Club dock and, and the uh, Yacht Yard docks. Um, in sort of a compromise, the dimensions aren't on the chart as to exactly what the distance is from the channel to those uh, structures. Um, however, the lease areas are on the chart the channel is specified as being a hundred feet in, in width and uh, it's possible to uh, to measure or determine what the distances are from the other references on the on the chart uh, which include uh, you know a, a longitude and, and latitude grid uh, you know etc um, and the chart is uh, is based upon a, a satellite photo uh, which of course is going to show uh, show structures within the with their actual, uh, you know, references to each other in terms of distances. And I think that's about it, yes. So I did find the uh, original and I am shocked that it really goes back to 2018. I didn't find anything more recent and it shows that we did discuss it um, and revise this per, uh, per a prior meeting. So I believe that the resolution uh, that I had shown before can be considered. Um, I think I lost it. <laughs> but this is the prior review. So is there anything inconsistent with that opinion vis-a-vis um, -vis what we're looking at now? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I, I believe that the changes, at least from the standpoint of the LWRP consistency are minor and uh, this resolution actually accurately reflects that history. Okay. So- yeah, if, um, I, I was gonna say, if, if we're referring to, to 2018, uh, the, 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 the principal changes would be as to the details of the length of stay of vessels, size of vessels, et cetera, before they have to report or, or, get, a, or get a permit. Um, but I don't think that, that really like flags the LWRP, does it, John? No, I, I don't think so. So. No. so all we're really looking at here are issues here um, as to whether or not it's consistent with the, you know, um, the LWRP. And, um, from my point of view, I think what we approved in December 2018, um, I, do we have to redraft this or can we just send a memo to the village board that 
we have looked at the updated version of, um, of this law and we feel that it remains consistent with the LWRP as expressed in this memo of December, 2018. Did I, uh, am I not screen sharing the resolution? Yes. It's res resolution, I'm sorry if it's not showing. Oh yeah, it is, but I don't know what, what, what is okay. it actually? Is this so the, the one last, that was? Yeah, there's the background that we talked about. Then there's two resolves that the board reviewed the amended proposed local law and that uh, you reaffirmed the recommendation of the trustee oh. finding that it was consistent. Perfect. I thought it was the one stamped with December 18. Um, uh, that was another share. I did find the resolution. Right, okay. So I think this is fine. So what we wanna do is just vote on accepting this um, memorandum. Is that correct? Yes, adopting the resolution. Right. Uh, may I have an, a motion to adopt this resolution as just reviewed by Chick Voorhees? I'll make the motion. Thank you. A second? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, so I have one question that's kind of relevant to the, this meeting. Um, I'm sorry, is this with Marianne? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I see a, a hand, a raised hand. Oh. Lisa. Lisa. Okay, public comments. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi, Lisa. I was just waiting to be uh, recognized. I'm Lisa Stanson Desimo, is at Hillside Drive West, Sag Harbor. Um, so I had a question about the resolution that was just approved. Uh, how does this resolution relate to the proposed, the amendment to local law chapter 278 by the board of trustees? which was presented at public hearings last year, February and March, July and September. Um, John, I'm unaware that this law was reviewed by the Village Board of Trustees numerous times um, in this in the previous 12 months. No, yes, it was. I, I, yes, it has. I mean, I think Lisa has the correct dates as to when it was when it was reviewed. Um, the last time was was at the September Village Board meeting that, that I'm aware of. And it was reintroduced at the work session at the last work session that was, uh, uh, I don't know, it was 10 days ago, something like that. All right. But this, um, um, the community member just gave us about six dates, but that's that's fine. The most recent one was the one that was at the work session. And before that, it was six months ago in September. Right? Correct. Yeah. There's, but there are, I mean, again, I, I, I can't verify each date, but I assume she's correct mm -hmm. because there were right. approximately at those times were reviews or hearings uh, before the village board. Okay. And Lisa, can you tell us what is your what is your question again? As to how how is the it changed? The resolution relate the resolution the harbor committee is approving now relates to the amendments to chapter two seventy eight by the. So what happened is this law has been in the process of being revised since 2016, um, John Parker gave us a brief history. And in 2016, New York State gave the village of Sag Harbor what is called an expanded jurisdiction. So rather than being cut off at 1500 feet from shore, now we go out to the channel. But since 2016, we have been trying to um, write a law that everybody can agree on and that speaks to that jurisdiction and the expanded responsibility that we have now that our jurisdiction goes out further into the water. And there's been t 
tugging this way and that way and back and forth and da 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 and different cool de sacs. And we've now finally come to the point where it seems that everybody is pretty much on board with the law as John um, Parker just summarized. So one of the steps in the, the village board said, yes, we wanna go with this through at the work session as a preliminary to final adoption. But what they've asked the Harbor Committee to do because it's part of our responsibility is to review this and other things for a coastal consistency review, which means taking a look to see whether or not this law fits within the LWRP. Well, it's mainly the goals of the, of the LWRP and there's a list of goals, but, but, right. but principally it's, it, it, the goals are to, to promote access and to preserve traditional activities. There's a long list of goals. I throw this to check right. to, uh, to, to list the, the, the goals of the LWRP, but, but one of the original uh, duties of the, of the Harbor Committee uh, was, was to review uh, proposed laws uh, and uh, to determine uh, or resolutions and determine whether they are consistent with the goals of the, of the LWRP. So that's what we have to do every time there's a, uh, um, there's a proposal uh, that could have some effect uh, on, on those uh, on those goals. Okay, thank you. And so the trustees will vote on the amendments to chapter 278 at next week's meeting. We can't speak for them, but I think that that might happen. But this is a part of the process. It had to come to Harbor Committee. Back in 2018, December, we had reviewed the law, the revised laws that stood then. And we said, yes, this works, right? Vis-a-vis -vis the LWRP. And then because it has been tinkered on in the last two and a half years um, before it could be formally adopted by the village, it had to come back to the Harbor Committee for us to review and say, yes, this is still in line with the goals as John Parker just mentioned with the LWRP. So that's the process that we're going through this very moment. Okay, that, that's helpful. Actually last year, March and September, I had submitted some comments, I think some of which were referred to um, by Mr. Parker's summary. I did have just one last question. There was reference to a map um, it's a so, harbor management. Yes. So is the map prepared by First Coastal Corp dated April 14, 2005, the harbor management chart, or the map prepared by Nelson Pope and Voorhees? Dated um, so what is, the, the, yes. what, the one you referred to from 2006. Uh, it is the one that's in effect currently at the at the moment. Uh, the the ones prepared by Nelson Pope and Voorhees are, are the amendments. Um, and for for the inner harbor, uh, the main change was to use a a more current satellite photo, uh, which would show construction changes, new docks, changes in docks, etc., that have occurred from 2006 uh, to the to the present. Uh, as I say, the 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 uh, the, the chart uh, number one, the overall chart showing the entire jurisdiction of the of, of the village, um, mainly changed in adding the jurisdiction from 1500 uh, out, out to the channel. Again, it goes out I think about another 3,000 3, feet to the outer uh, to the outer channel. Uh, but that's the main change uh, on on that part of the of, of the chart. Um, there was some refinement of the speed zones um, actually in the in the cove. Etc. But uh, uh, I think if you look at the two charts, you'll find that they are um, uh, that, that they they one will basically overlay the other without uh, without any particular changes other than the added jurisdictional area. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So now I've forgotten where we are. I think we already approved it, right? We approved um, uh, the memo that uh, Chick uh, the resolution that Chick drew up, correct? Correct, yes, we have a motion okay. and a second and it was approved. Okay. Um, so just a question that I have, um, 
Uh, Chick, um, you're aware I sent you an email that the um, Suffolk County quarter percent sales tax grant is open again. Um, and we benefited from that before with um, some rain gardens that are in progress, I believe, on Bay Street and Havens Beach. Um, but is this, if, is your recollection that this is only shovel ready, moving dirt around kind of grants, or could we um, go to them for our harbor or Havens Beach um, uh, watershed man, uh, master plan? Uh, I would have to check on that. My, I know the preferences for shovel ready projects, but I would have to check on the parameters uh, for what applications they would consider. Well, the date's coming up really soon. Um, I forget, it's either like the 15th or the 28th of this month. I know that we checked with East Hampton CPF before we submitted to them and we were told that they would entertain a study, but then I heard we were turned down because we were a study and we spent like $3,000 putting together a grant application. Um, of course, that's a little infuriating, but trying to move on, I'd like to see whether or not we can't um, sort of- um, We can recycle it. it. Can we recycle it? And I know mm -hmm. that this quarter percent sales tax is only 50% of whatever you, you know, it'll only do 50% of a project, but I have some thoughts about where that rest of that money might come from. Could you please check on that and get I back to me? Let you know, and that amount of time is a lifetime. <laughs> just, just kidding, but um, we have- I understand. Here. If it's eligible, uh, we, can, we can look to recycle it, but I'll get back to you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, um, Lily, do you, um, are there other general comments or do we go on to the question of to whether or not we adjourn this meeting and go into executive session? Do you need legal advice on? Well, I did, I'll, I'm gonna quickly interrupt. Will and I have started to go back to the houses and to the um, approved decisions through the Harbor Committee about revegetation and so forth. Oh, good. So we've started our first couple site visits. We've been to 71 Glover, um, looked at 10, from a distance Cove Road, but that's a building frenzy. 14 Cove Road. Um, I realized we went to the wrong house at 358 Redwood. Uh, one of my questions is, are we allowed to just drop around people's houses? We knocked on a couple doors. Um, what is the I would protocol? Say yes, but um, Fred, what is your thought? Do we as a Harbor Committee have the right to inspect? I would uh, certainly first attempt to get the permission of the property owner to do that. You know, um, you, know you don't have the enforcement authority like the building inspector would do. I, I think the policy probably should be to, uh, you know, to seek permission in the first instance. So if they're not there, we shouldn't walk on their property? Uh, you know, if you really need to go on the property, I, 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 I would be reluctant to do that without permission. Yeah. Uh, it, um, there have been incidents in the village where people were refusing inspectors. Um, if I could speak with, about one thing that Lily and I noticed was... Oh, good. Um, Thank you, Will. On Glover, um, it's an estate. I mean, that thing is so large, but... Um, we could talk about planting, but the thing that really struck us was that there's a very large deer fence um, that's very close to the water. And um, it struck us as probably not kosher. And I don't know, um, I mean, we took photographs, but um, what's, what's the ruling about even the temporary deer fence within the setback, within the wetlands area? The structure. It's a structure. Well, it's a how it's an eight foot deer fence that's right on just above the high tide mark. Which probably isn't supposed to probably be under a permit. Yeah. So was this a property that came before the harbor committee? Yes. Correct. It was approved. It's been built. It's a big white house on the left heading northbound on Glover. Um, 
So but we, I, be, we I believe their consultant submitted a uh, kind of a follow up report just recently. It, That's it's pretty beautiful, approval, right? No, yeah. but was there any mention of the deer fence in that? I guess not. It's beautifully planted. It must be an Ed Hollander job. Um, lovely specimens. I believe there are some Phragmites starting to pop up in the uh, vegetated buffer area. But yeah, that eight foot deer fence is curious about that one. Well, so what, what, what would be the procedure? Is that something that we, we should I, talk I would to? Refer, you know, if you see something like that, I would refer to the building inspector. They, okay. they have the enforcement right. power. And I think it's good to do this in writing. Um, the other yeah. thing needs to be, we have a new building inspector. You know, one of the things we had worked out with Tom Priato was that before a certificate of occupancy would be issued, that, um, that it also applied to the planting plan as approved by the Harbor Committee. And I have a feeling that unless we sort of initiate the heart, the building inspector, the new building inspector to that step in the CO, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So um, I would, um, I would think through how we're going to do that. And it might be like working with Bob Plum as well, who's the liaison to the building inspector. Mm -hmm. um, do you want me to get involved or? Lily um, and I can talk to Bob. Well, the other thing, yeah. actually, when I was sitting and going through the paperwork that Doris so nightly, nicely pulled up, I met Jim, the new building inspector, and right. was discussing what I was doing. So he's aware of it because I said, you know, before that Tom had his hands full and we thought this was a good way of going around and making sure everything was done as it should be. Right. But that's that's a two step process because what you're doing is after that's been planted, after they've gotten a CO, you're going through and you're looking to see that things are still alive and well and functioning, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Are you also extending yourself to the building inspector that when he is on the eve of issuing a building permit, that you guys are gonna go and look and see whether or not the planting plan has been executed the way it was intended to be? We have not. Thank you for bringing up that point. I think that would be, I think that would be great. Yeah. All right. So I guess, so to your point, we could talk to Bob, but I, I, I think that's a good idea is to put it in writing because it's not part of our purview to um, issue violation to the code. I mean, that's a building, right. that's an object, et cetera, but we can pass it on to Bob and uh, we have, photographs and the address, et cetera, and see how it, how it goes from there. All right. And both of you are um, business owners. So I would really like you to keep a spreadsheet of all the properties that you visited with the dates and the notes, you know, because I mean, yeah. even like, you know, looking at this LW Coastal Consistency Review, I had no idea that it was December 2018, the last time we looked at that. It didn't seem that long ago. So I think it's really important to like, when, when it got Harbor Committee approval, when the CO was, and when we might need to go and visit them and, and what your notes are and maybe attach pictures or something. All right. Can you do that? Yeah. Otherwise it'll all just become, he said, she said, and yeah. you don't remember and you're yeah, scratching I your yeah, there, there could be a, a notebook of follow-up uh, landscape issues. I think that's a good idea. That's documented. I, I don't, I wouldn't do it in a notebook because a notebook could fall in the water. I would do it on the computer somehow. I've discovered how to do Google Slides. It is mind-blowingly neat. Uh, so you can put mm -hmm. pictures and we can do all of that and write everything and share it to Doris or whomever. So it's got photographs as well as notes. Right. Okay, that's great. But it's one of the things that I like about Excel is that you can sort things by date. I don't know so, how to do that. Huh? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not, not savvy on Excel. Well, oh. you, you, you guys will come over and we'll do it on my front porch and I will show you and it's really easy. Thank you. Will, will you don't know how to do Excel either? Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. So 
um, the three of us, well, we can't the three of us get together. Um, we could do it through a Zoom call. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any miscellaneous comments? Mary, I'm, I'm still in. Mary, I'm still I'm in the dark. <laughs> Mary, Mary yes. I, I, I just like to follow up on your 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 comment about the about the grants. One with uh, with an explanation, and, and two with a with passing on a recommendation. I mean, the East Hampton Committee has been fairly consistent in not approving grant applications, which were studies not attached to a particular project. And there may have been some confusion about that. I'm not, not sure who you talked to, and I don't want to get into the details of that. Oh, but no, I, I, I didn't just, talk to them. Chick Voorhees talked to Kim Shaw. But, I, I'm just, again, I don't want to get into these of who talked to who because I'm not sure that's that, that's appropriate. I, I can say from the decisions of the committee uh, in the uh, uh, I don't know, two or three years that I've been on the committee, they've been consistent in requiring that studies be tied into a particular project. And, and in this case, it, it wasn't. It, it could have been cured by by simply being more specific as to what projects were being studied. Uh, but what is being recommended or requested uh, by the committee uh, is that the village update its uh, 2016 uh, water quality project improvement plan. I think I've got the, the title correct on that. Um, the town is, is, is going to update their plan also from 2016. Uh, and they would like to have an updated village plan to incorporate into that. And the advantage of that is, is that the plan goes before the town board for a public hearing. A any projects which are included in that um, have their public hearing at that point. So that in the future, when, it, when there is a, an application to implement that particular project, uh, an additional public hearing is, is not required. Uh, so it's a, it's an ability to sort of fast track the, the project, but I just wanted to pass on you know that request um, so that it could be considered, especially for right. you right. when you're talking right. about there. And sure. and John, you passed that on to me before, but I really my goal is to have an overarching plan that really looks at the whole watershed and not a you know a list of twelve different projects. I really want to look at the whole thing. So maybe once we get money and we can look at the whole thing, we can get back into like, you know, projects one through 12 again. But I, from my point of view, I think we really need to look at the whole thing, which includes like, you know, the, you know, the drainage systems and how are we looking at the catch basins and are we clean those things out? You know, all the water that falls from route 114 Little Northwest Creek over to Col Maria, everything that travels north to Haven's Beach. And that's not just a matter of putting together like another 12 projects. I think it, it, it goes to something more foundational. And um, anyway, that's the end of mine. Well, Can I, I, get I, don't a I don't disagree with you, but, and there are ways to finesse that, by the way. But, uh, uh, but, but I, you know, again, I will agree with you that the need for an overall plan, but I'm, I'm just saying that he's. East Ham Town is agreeing with you too in saying that they want the village to update the, their plan. Um, okay, can I can I get a motion to adjourn unless there's another topic to be discussed? I'll move. Thank you. Second. I'll I second. Second, or did everybody leave already? <laughs> I'll second. And, and, Thank and you. We have withdrawn that request for the executive session. I assume, right? Oh. Well, we have to adjourn anyway before we consider that. So um, all in favor of adjourning, aye. Well, aye. are we? Yeah. Right. So Lily, are you requesting um, that we go into an executive session? Fred, is it appropriate? Uh, it's appropriate, yeah, the way you described. Uh, Lily uh, texted me as to what you wanted to discuss, which is obviously appropriate also. So. Um, yeah, it, I, I think it is uh, the way you described it. If you guys don't mind, I apologize, but I think it's important. Okay, so Doris, can you um, send us another Zoom link? Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. All right. Well, you just have to tell us what the numbers are. 
Okay, I'll send them over. Okay, you're going to email us, is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you.